right now we head to the northeast for live Premier League commentary of Newcastle United versus Fulham, where we, we can join Vicky Sparks. Thanks very much, Flo. Hello and welcome. So, yes, from a huge game at the top of the Women's Super League to a huge game near the top of the Men's Premier League because Newcastle United and Fulham are enjoying seasons to remember. Newcastle on a 13-match unbeaten run in the Premier League. They come into this one fourth in the table. Fulham have won all five games in all competitions since the World Cup. They sit sixth in the top flight, just four points behind Newcastle. And when you consider that they were promoted last season, Steve Stone, former England and Aston Villa manager alongside me, it's been a remarkable season for both of these clubs. But, but let's start with Fulham. The job that Marco Silva has done has been nothing short of outstanding. Well, it's been quite incredible. I think last time Fulham, when they came up, they tried to stick to their principles of trying to play out from the back and they got stuck in that way just a little bit. This time they've mixed it up. They've got big Mitrovic up front and if you're going to play with him and your team, you need to have the ball. You need to progress your way up the pitch. There's no way you're going to be knocking the ball in the channels for him to run up for it. You need to keep the ball, get yourself up the pitch and put quality balls in the box. I also think they can defend deep and be difficult to break down. The defence is, you know, it has conceded quite a few goals, but I think they can mix it really well at the minute. And Mirovic coming back into the team today, I think is a big bonus for them. He's the goal scorer, he's the main man, but he's backed up by a lot of good players who are working as a unit, as on Newcastle at the minute. Yeah, that's one of three changes for Fulham as both sets of players make their way out onto the pitch here at St James's Park. The Fulham players playing in their change strip of green are applauding that little pocket high up in the stand away to our left hand side of Fulham fans and they've travelled in their numbers for this one but they are outnumbered by around 50,000 Geordies. The black and white flags are waving all around us at St James's Park. So those three changes for Fulham, as Steve mentions Mitrovic is back in after serving a suspension for yellow cards. He replaces Vinicius. Anthony Robinson, their regular left back, is suspended. That's a blow for them. So Lavin Kurzawa makes only his third start for the club. It's his first Premier League appearance since the 4-1 defeat by Newcastle earlier this season. And it's a Diop comes in for Tosin at centre-half. The big team news for Newcastle, they're unchanged from the League Cup quarter-final win over Leicester. That means Joe Linton starts after being charged with drink driving this week. Eddie Howe said before this match that he would make a decision in consultation with Joe Linton closer to the game. Says that the charge came as a shock. He's very remorseful. We're supporting him and we understand the seriousness of the situation. He was stopped in the early hours of Thursday morning this week, Joe Linton, and will appear before magistrates later this month. He, he had a decision to make, Eddie Howe, yeah. didn't we? And we've seen in the Premier League completely different circumstances, but, you know, in the last couple of weeks, Marcus Rashford being dropped by Ten Hag to the bench after being late, oversleeping for a team meeting, came on as a substitute. As a manager, it, it was a call that he had to make, and, and the call he's made is that Joe Linton starts. Well, it's a difficult call for a manager, and as a manager in the Premier League, you'll, you'll get hit with these circumstances sometimes. It's not always about football. That's a, you know, they've talked about and being remorseful and having to be educated in the seriousness of the offence. And hopefully he does understand that because it's a really serious offence that he's been charged with. Not been found guilty yet, of course, but he's decided to, to get it out of the way, play the player now, and hopefully then it's put to bed. Either way, he could have left him out and given me disciplinary and leave him out for one match and then bring him back. Either way is right. But the manager's actually seen fit to do this. And we have to go with Eddie Howe. He's made some really good decisions since he's been here as manager. He has the trust in his players and the board and the supporters. So let's go with it today. Alexander Mitrovic just coming over to the Fulham technical area in front of us. Taking a swig of water from a bottle and now pacing his way back in those bright orange boots towards the halfway line. <laughs> you just know, Steve, he's still a cult hero up yeah. there, Mitrovic. He will be part of the story in some way this afternoon. Well, you know that Fulham will score goals. They've scored a lot of goals this season, um, and he's been a big part of that. Uh, the biggest problem that Fulham have had with him is he's probably played about, what, 14 games for him this season. He's been suspended, so you can get you can get him on the pitch. You get crosses into the box. He's really dangerous. And the longer the game goes on, that Fulham are in the game, the more dangerous he becomes, because if you can back Newcastle off into that box and you can constantly pep on the box, he's the one that will damage it. But they've got some quality players in the middle of the park. You know, we've talked about William and Pereira and the likes of that. They've got some talented individuals in there as well. So this is not going to be a formality for Newcastle. This is fourth against sixth in the Premier League and Fulham have just 
snuck up into that position. Nobody's really noticed them. I think they've won the last four Premier League games. They've been brilliant since coming back from the break from the World Cup. And they're going in the right direction. Both teams are going the right direction. I think it's a really, really big game for both teams. If they've got ambition, with Newcastle getting in the top four for Champions League and actually full and pushing on to whatever they want to do, whatever their aspirations are this year. Let's not, let's not underestimate them, that's for sure. Huge match here on Five Sports Extra over on Five Live. You can listen to another huge game at Stamford Bridge, Chelsea, with under pressure Graham Potter at the helm taking on Crystal Palace. That's getting underway in the next few moments as well. And then later this afternoon on Five Live, we have the North London derby, Tottenham against Arsenal. Three crackers for you in the Premier League across the BBC. But here at St James's Park, our focus is on Newcastle United, fourth in the Premier League against Fulham, sixth in the Premier League. It will be Fulham to get us underway in their changed light green strip with the checked front of dark blue. Newcastle in the traditional black and white striped shirt, the black shorts and the black socks. And we are underway at St James's Park. Fulham in possession with Ken Tete. The right back plays it downfield. Big cheer as the ball goes to Dan Byrne. What a week it's been for him. Clears the ball straight out of play for a Fulham throw. But scoring that first goal for his boyhood club. The club that broke his heart when they released him as an 11-year-old. But he returns a year ago. And it was a brilliant goal. We were here to watch it as well against Leicester, weren't we, Steve? Cutting him from the left-hand side as Mitrovic is challenged down by the corner flag. Byrne getting that long leg in. And it's another throw to Fulham deep in Newcastle territory. I think Fulham be pleased, even though we just played a minute, they, they played in Newcastle's half right from the start. They didn't want what's happened against Leicester and Newcastle were dominant right from the start. You know, you've got to dominate Newcastle in terms of quieting this crowd down, playing their half, play towards their goal, not try to play too much around the back and invite their press on because they're really good at that as we've seen against Leicester. Newcastle's strength this season has been their energy. And they've been really, really top draw. And, um, but is, is it for Newcastle going to be after the Lord's Mayor show where he had such a good performance and the emotion of that cup game and everybody on the pitch and the fans, all the rest of it. It's just going to be, can they get back to the league performance and make sure they put this one to bed? It's going to be a difficult, difficult game for them. Fabian Cher clears away at the back for Newcastle. The header is met by Tim Ream. And forward to Alexander Mitrovic. He sends it out to the right-hand side. Fulham midway through the Newcastle half. Williams ball forward, looking for the run of Harrison Reed, But it's gathered by Nick Pope, all in bright yellow. So we'll take you through the lineups. Pope in goal for Newcastle. The back four of Trippier, Cher, Botman and Byrne. Ahead of them, it's Longstaff, Gimaraes and Willock with Almiron, who scored twice in that 4-1 win against Fulham this season. Joel Linton and Wilson, who was also on the score sheet along with Longstaff up front. Skimmerish wins the ball for Newcastle, midway inside the Newcastle half and spreads it out to Fabian Cher. Fulham with Leno in goal, the back four of Tete, Diop, Reem and Kazava. Ahead of them it's Palinia and Reed with decoyed over Reed, Pereira and William supporting the former Newcastle cult hero Alexander Mitrovic up front and here is Joe Linton outside the Fulham penalty area heads the ball to the left hand side and Joe Willick will try the curler from the edge of the box it was always going wide and easy for Leno to watch behind two minutes gone nil nil yeah good mix of play there obviously um, Fulham have tried to press out of the pitch they're trying to sit on Bruno Newcastle we talked about the other night about right side dominant making sure they shut that there's pass to the playoff so Shaw then just sends one straight over the top of Joe Linton running in off the off the right back and causing some problems. You need runners to go in behind when teams come and press you. And they've got the mix right there. Good pressure from Newcastle as Fulham play the goal kick out through their own penalty area and Longstaff wins that ahead of Mitrovic. But Fulham get the foot in and will be brought by Pereira down the left-hand side to Kazava. Nice little interchange of passes from Fulham down that left-hand side and it's brought down now calmly by Palinia. He sends it to Issa Diop, the centre half plays it out to the right hand side and William lovely layoff looking for Harrison Reeds and will be intercepted by Botman but he can't keep it in and it's a throw to Fulham midway inside Newcastle territory and we've we've touched on that 4-1 win that Newcastle achieved at Craven Cottage earlier this season but we, we have to mention I mean the huge context Fulham down to 10 men inside yeah. eight minutes Chalabar sent off for a, a high challenge on Longstaff completely different complexion on the game of course and, and can we read anything really from, from that result other than that Newcastle got the job done against 10 men well they had to get the job done it's not always easy against 10 men but Newcastle got it done that day context no I think it's a different game altogether I think Fulham have come to the terms with this league very very quickly now and 
they look confident out there. I've got to be honest with you. I'm watching them. They're not overawed by the fact that they've come to St. James's Park and the atmosphere can be electric. They've quieted it down right from the start. Playing out from the back, being comfortable with it, but then they will mix it and knock it over the top at times with Mitrovic. And they've just played it across their own penalty area. Miscue by Diop under pressure. Good pressure from Joe Linton. And the ball goes out of play for a Newcastle throw level with the edge of the penalty area. Goal is here on five sports extras. Dan Byrne will interchange passes with Joe Linton and Joe Linton will now send it back central position to Fabian Cher. Cher who sends it out to the right hand side. A few cries of shoot there from 35 yards out. Well, we've seen him do it. Give him a race, Mike. 25 Aye. yards out, slides it through instead. Long start, very good sliding block by Diop. It's behind for a Newcastle corner. Good play all round from both sides. Yeah, well, great movement to start with. You're trying to get the right back trip. You're trying to get in the Shah's got it, but he gets a played out wide to Almiron. Almiron just slips it into Bruno, who slide ball in for Longstaff, who was trying to make some little intricate runs. Still not quite confident in front of goal. Gets a swing in it, but a great block. But again, good start from Newcastle, good into play again down that right hand side. So, corner to Newcastle to be taken from the left hand side as we look at it. Newcastle playing from right to left in this first half at St James's Park. And the corner is played short by Joe Linton to Almiron, who plays it to Gimaraes, 25 yards out. Now picked up by Kieran Trippier, steps past Mitrovic, low ball into the area, headed away by Tim Ream. You know, Gimaraes wins the header back to Trippia, right hand side, offside flag is up on the edge of the Fulham penalty area. Callum Wilson was up there and it will be a free kick to Fulham just outside their own box, 0-0. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's been a decent start from both sides, both managers would be happy. Um, the crowd's a little bit flat from the, from the game in the week, you know, the, the atmosphere was unbelievable here as we witnessed, great occasion. Um, and it's always, it's, not, it's always difficult to get yourself up after, after a game like that. And the crowd obviously are exactly the same. You know, they're trying to get to Wembley with Newcastle the first time in a lot of years, haven't won a cup competition. So Fulham are trying to quiet them down and the, the, they're doing the right thing at the minute. They're slowing the game down every time the ball goes to play. They're not in a hurry to get it back in. When they're in possession, they're trying to keep it, they're trying to move it, they're trying not to give Newcastle the ball and really manage the football game. Yes, it's one of those things that Eddie Howe said before this match that they need to get to the same levels yeah. that they did against Leicester as Fulham have a throw on halfway. Kenny Tete will take it up to Alexander Mitrovic while marshalled by Dan Byrne and Fulham advance midway through the Newcastle half with another throw. But yes, it's, it's one of those you talk about, Steve, how long it's been since Newcastle have won a trophy. 1969, the European <laughs> Fairs Cup. If you want to go back to a major domestic trophy, it's the FA Cup in 1955. The fans here, how they would love to end that long wait this season. Southampton, they will face in the two-legged semi-final as the ball goes out of play on halfway for a throw to Newcastle. And Harrison Reed is saying, well, hang on a minute. What's going on there? Mm. I thought that decision was going to go our way. He tried to test Nick Pope. And it will be a throw instead to Newcastle. Yeah on the halfway line send it forward looking for Callum Wilson it's all the way back now with Bernd Leno as the Newcastle striker can't oh. latch onto it and Tim Ream just taking a little bit of a chance was under real pressure oh. from Almiron it's gone out for a goal kick now Almiron's furious he says that should have been a corner it's, it's one of these isn't it you mentioned it early mm. on Steve Stone Fulham will play out from the back but there's been a couple of times there the pressure on Ream and the miscue from Diob Newcastle could get some joy there well that's where Newcastle do get some joy they're a really athletic side they try to press as high up the pitch as they possibly can and what they do by press up there when they do win it they just give the crowd a massive lift and everybody's on their side right from the off so yes Fulham play for the back play the way they try and play but also try and mix it a little bit you know you've got big Mitrovic up there try and clip it over the press sometimes and back Newcastle off before you then try and play sometimes teams try and play out from the back right from the start and draw teams on sometimes you mix the play you can back them off and do it both ways and Fulham just got to be careful with that they were just a little bit you know, you're going, mm, not so sure you need to be doing that so early in the game. You know Newcastle are good at the press. They would have looked at that. So Fulham with this set piece midway through the Newcastle half. Pereira is one of the players standing over it. Diop's big at the back post, isn't he? He's a, he's a huge figure. Yeah, He looks very six foot tall. four, isn't he? A really big power from Mitrovic has gone down the other side. And they've obviously got someone clever lined up. So Pereira swings it in. The header is won by Dan Byrne, who's not shy of a bit of height himself at six foot seven. Fulham almost win it back on the edge of the area. Do send it into the box. Diop sends the ball across, blocked away, and now the flag belatedly goes up into James's parks. Here's well, why didn't that happen before? But yeah. as we know, the officials 
like to let plays play out if there's a chance of scoring, but in the end, the flag goes up and Newcastle have the free kick, nil now. Yeah, it was uh, Mitrovic making a run to the to the near post to start with there. I wasn't quite sure why he was really going to go there. Newcastle got all the big centre-halves in the middle of the goal. You had Diop and Mitrovic at the back post would have been probably the better of the options to try and clip one at the back post to try and really put them under pressure. Great sliding challenge over on the far side by Tim Ream on Callum Wilson as he looked to advance down the right-hand side. And Newcastle have a throw just inside the Fulham half. Yeah, Fulham look compact. You can tell they, they work really hard on their shape and making sure they don't get disjointed. No gaps with, to, from back to front. You know, 40 yards from the centre-halves up to the, the centre-forward. And uh, they're nice and compact every time Newcastle get the ball to play through. Ball given away. William picks it up on halfway for Fulham, who are racing forward out to the left-hand side. Finds Andreas Pereira. Mitrovic is in the centre. Tumbles in the box. It's out on the left-hand side still as decoyed over Reed. Lays it off to Pereira. Mitrovic has got back to his feet. Inside the penalty area. Shot blocked. Tete comes and curls it over the bar. Well, we talked about Fulham being nice and compact and then counter-attack and win the, win the ball back there. As soon as they won it, they sprung forward really quickly, didn't they? Ball comes in again when you get Mirovic up the top end of the pitch. He's a handful. Doesn't matter how tight you get to him, he's so big and so strong. He's back to go, tries to get turned and have a shot, comes back out. William fires one over the bar, but there's the danger signs from, from what are a decent side in Fulham. You can tell they can score goals. You can tell they're compact. You can tell they're counter-attack. They will mix the play. This will be a difficult afternoon for Newcastle. Goal kick is sent long by Nick Pope, but Fulham pick it up again on halfway. And here is Andreas Pereira, another who is enjoying a fantastic season with Fulham after arriving in the summer from Manchester United. But that move breaks down and it's all the way back with Sven Botman just outside his own penalty area as Mitrovic lurks on the edge of the D. What a season he's having. 11 goals in 15 appearances in the Premier League. If he scores again, it'll be his best goal-scoring season in the Premier League in, in his career. And as Newcastle, under pressure, have it in their own half, now back with Botman on the edge of the D. It, it's remarkable, really, with Mitrovic, isn't it? I mean, there were questions from some, not from me, I'll add. I put him on my fancy team right at the start of the season. We're but brave. given that he only had three goals in his last Premier League season for Fulham, I think people question, is he going to do it regularly as Callum Wilson comes down the right-hand side? Marco Silva thinks that was offside. Flag stays down. Wilson's ball into the area, deflected behind. Newcastle corner. We'll come back to that Mitrovic point in yeah. a moment because it touches on something you said, Steve, about playing to his strengths. But let's focus on this Newcastle corner and good work by Wilson down the channel. Well, good uh, good work again from was Joe Linton right off the first minute, that running behind. And if, if Fulham come on the press and try to st stop that ball into Bruno, a long staff, they then just got that option of spinning it in behind if they get high. I mean, they've got a good line, I've got to be honest with you, Fulham. It's nice and compact, nice line, nice and high. But if you haven't got your shoulders turned as a centre half and Wilson starts running behind you, some of them pace, you've got trouble. So, corner taken short from the right hand side. Trippier is 25 yards out, will now deliver the ball in, looking for Joe Linton. It's well headed away, helped back into the area by Willock, cleared away by Kenny Tete, who was brought down just on the edge of the box and Fulham have a free kick, nil-nil, 12 minutes gone. So it just just going back to Mitrovic, I yeah. think you nailed it, Steve, when you said it's about playing to his strengths. And last time they were in the Premier League, Fulham, he was in and out of the starting lineup, and they didn't always play to his strengths. And this season is showing what happens if you build a team around Mitrovic. Well, they've built a team full stop, not just a team around Mitrovic, and the, the, they use him as the focal point, of course they do, but, you know, Pereira and the number 10 there, they've got some William on there, they've got some good players around him as well. You're right, Mirovic did not play enough games. He was in the team, but they were playing out from the back obsessively and they did not get it forward at any stage. There was no crosses coming in the box room at any stage, so you weren't using his strengths. But this team has, and to score the amount of goals he scored, it's terrific. Lovely play by Harrison Reed to find William down the right-hand side. Botman gets the foot in, but Reed, early ball, Mitrovic was offside, leaves it out to the left-hand side, is decoyed over Reed into the penalty area. Good run, thumping clearance by Fabian Scher, but Fulham are playing some beautiful yeah. stuff as they pick it up on halfway. Well, we just talked about Newcastle mixing the play, and, and Fulham are doing exactly the same. It's very similar styles. You're trying to play in between the lines when they can, but they're recognising when they're coming high each team, and they're spinning one in behind them. Great, great ball over to the far side there for Deco Duva Reed, and then he just cuts inside to try and lay one in. Just a look, you know, the, you're just looking at both teams thinking they're both going to create chances. You, you look at Newcastle, we've, we've looked at can they score enough goals when they get lots of chances? But you actually expect Fulham to score one of the opportunities they're going to score because of how many goals Mitrovic has got so far. He's got a lot. Yeah, clinicalness is yeah. going to be so yeah. key, particularly for Newcastle, who have struggled with that. Yeah. 
in recent games. 13 minutes gone, nil-nil, but really good contest. And I think Marco Silva in particular will be delighted with how Fulham have started this game. They look the better side at the moment. They're certainly not overawed by any sense of occasion here at once again a sold out St James's Park over on Five Live it's still goalless between Chelsea and Crystal Palace at Stamford oh, Bridge beautiful. as Fulham play the ball over the top looking for Andreas oh. Pereira and he's got the better of Sven Botman who pulled him back as well but Pereira keeps his feet lays it off to Willian Willian's balling good header away by Cher helped on on the edge of the area by Almiron who's really having to come back and defend there sliding challenge by Kazawa Ball goes out of play for a Newcastle throw, but that just sums it up at the moment for Newcastle. We know that Almiron's a willing runner. We know that he'll run himself into the ground, but at the moment, the work he's doing is in his own heart. It is, yeah, and I'm enjoying Reed in the middle of the park as well. He's uh, he's coming short, little give and goes, and then he's spotting that they're getting the press, and so then he's spinning in behind, and Williams doing the same, little give and goes, and then they recognise him when the press is coming on and they're spinning, and and Fulham are on the front foot all the time they win the ball consistently interception by the centre half Diop who's picked up the ball on the right wing now little one two cuts it back into Willian right hand side of the penalty area Willian tries to play it across it's blocked by Bruno Guimaraes Fulham at the moment are all over Newcastle they've got a corner too many straight balls from Newcastle uh, straight ball there from the centre half trying to play into Wilson very easy for centre halves and midfield players to read they probably need to play on the angle trying to get into Bruno and create those angles but as we've talked about before, Bruno is the key key man in this Newcastle side. And if you stop him, you stop a lot of what Newcastle do. Uh, and, and that's the key at the minute. They're sitting somebody on him, so they're having to play other people and they're just stepping through. The press is really good, Fulham. So the height up once again for Fulham. Reams there, Mitrovic of course as well, as Pereira prepares to take this corner kick from the right-hand side. It's whipped in towards the edge of the six-yard box. Well met by Joe Linton, header out of the penalty area, only as far as Willian, who dinks the ball back in. Again, Newcastle win the first header through Botman, the second through Wilson, help back into the box. Mitrovic is trying to bring it down. Appeal for a handball eventually is given against Mitrovic. And some cheers of celebration from the Newcastle fans as their former man is penalised and Newcastle have a free kick but it's fair to say Steve that they're under the cosh at the moment yeah. from a Fulham side who are playing with supreme confidence. Well they play with supreme confidence and Newcastle have got to make sure they don't underestimate teams. I'm sure they haven't. It's very difficult we talked about to get yourself up for games after midweek and all the euphoria that went into the cup game of the weekend then you play on a Sunday at two o'clock sometimes it takes you to half time just to get going for the manager and reset and say listen lads I told you this wouldn't be easy this is exactly what's happening they're the better team they're working harder they're on the press they're out gunning you in every single area all your individual battles you're losing so far so they need to just make sure they're stepping up and Newcastle are half pressing at the minute but they've almost lost the ball on the edge of their own penalty area Fulham Paulinia dallying Kibarecia has oh, stayed down yeah. as the ball Newcastle are just off it on the yeah it's played forward by Fulham outside the Newcastle penalty area Williams ball in headed away by Fabian Cher headed back forward by Fulham their first of the second balls at the moment and Byrne does well there just allows the ball to bounce out of play and now attention will be given outside the penalty area as the referee Allows the ball to bounce out of play, Robert Jones, and, and Guimaraes looks to be in a bit of difficulty here. Yeah, he went in for the press. It's something he normally does. He sort of pops out, we saw from that deep line midfield play, and we'll go on their deep line midfield play. And he's won it a couple of times already. This time he just was slow in getting there. Rocked his ankle in the tackle, and he stayed down right from the start. This is uh, it'd be worrying for that because he is the playmaker for Newcastle. He's been a huge influence on the team since he's got here. So 17 and a half minutes play, Guimaraes still receiving treatment, Eddie Howe's focus along with his coaching staff is on communicating instructions to several of his players. Callum Wilson's just come over to have a chat, Joe Willock as well in in-depth conversation with Eddie Howe and Steve Stone, it, it's unsurprising because it's obviously they hope that Guimaraes can, can get back up but just having a bit of a break, having the ability to reset and have some conversations I think you, you said it a couple of minutes ago they haven't started yet Newcastle, 18 minutes gone nil nil. No they hadn't started, they had one corner and they had an opportunity from Longstaff uh, probably after about two minutes and you thought oh it's going to be exactly the same, they're going to be bright they're going to be sharp, but you could see as soon as Fulham got in possession, they're popping a little one-two, switching the play, then Newcastle come on the press uh, they try to find it in the pockets if they can't find it there, they've got willing runners in behind and the wide men, so it's a, it's a good mix of play from Fulham, they've started really bright they look like a team who have won games recently. That's what they look like. I haven't seen a lot of them live. 
Um, fact, it's the first time I've seen them live, and they look like a good unit. They look like they're organised, and you expect that from Marco Silva as well. He's, he's a really good coach from back to front. They look solid, um, and it's it's going to be interesting. It's going to be a test to see how Newcastle can change it on the pitch at the first half, so to make sure they don't go behind. And if it gets to nil at half time, how can Eddie change it? How can his managerial style and what can he do about this game to change it so we can, Newcastle can get back in this game at the minute? Former England and Nottingham Forest midfielder Steve Stone alongside me this evening here on Five Sports Extra as the ball is up over the halfway line and Bruno Guimaraes, who has received treatment, jogs back onto the pitch. Fabian Scher helps it over the halfway line. Almiron down the right-hand side, just outside the Fulham penalty area. Nice little one to Almiron will just keep it down, down by the byline. Great clearance by Harrison Reed on the edge of his own six-yard box and headed back in field. Joe Linton will pick it up for Newcastle. And Sven Botman now has it on the halfway line. Nil-nil here on five sports extra. Still goalless at Stamford Bridge between Chelsea and Crystal Palace. You can listen to commentary of that over on Five Live. But we're delighted to have your company here at St James's Park this afternoon as Gimaraes, who is still hobbling a little bit, plays it forward, looking for Almiron. Trippier picks it up under pressure from Paulinia and sends it back to Cher just inside the Newcastle half. Newcastle, whose defeat against Sheffield Wednesday in the FA Cup two games ago was only their second loss all season in all competitions. First time they've been beaten since the end of August, which was at Anfield. 98th minute winner they conceded, but still on this 13 game unbeaten run in the Premier League and as they have the ball just inside the Fulham half in fact if they avoid defeat at St James's Park here they will equal the club record Premier League unbeaten run and they're coming down the right hand side Wilson finds the ball in the penalty area shot deflected spins away and dribbles out of the box and Willian is there and does very well there plays it off Joe Willock and it'll be a throw to Fulham deep in their own territory goalless well Newcastle have got two strengths at the minute they've got the ball over the top to Joe Linton or Callum Wilson running behind or they've got Longstaff who's running in off the line in behind and nobody's following the midfield players are not following he's getting in that's about the third or fourth time he's got in once was for a shot and the other times he's been for crosses he's getting in their midfield players just not following they're just not following the runners got to be more disciplined on that side they're more worried about Trippier and Almiron they're actually leaving Longstaff Newcastle have picked the ball back up from that throw Trippier goes down Robert Jones allows play to continue Almiron in possession back to Trippier plays it in field looking for the run of Longstaff but Ream anticipates and plays the ball out but straight to Bruno Gimaraes Marco Silva hopping in his technical area in front of us as it's, Joe Linton picks it up we just say it's Polina on that far far side he does a good job when there's something straight down them and anything off the back of him we talked about Longstaff there he's just running off the back of him every single time no communication from Ream behind or if he's got to go with him Polina Joe Linton on the stretch, plays it back to Gimaraes. Newcastle in possession with Longstaff now, just outside the centre circle, pressured by Pereira. But Longstaff does well to turn away from that pressure. And Joe Linton has it, central position to Gimaraes. Midway through the first half, 0-0 nil -nil on five sports extra as Trippier keeps it in, but can't keep possession. And the ball will be brought down the left-hand side for Fulham. Good sliding challenge on their left-back, Levin Kazava. And Newcastle pick it up once more. <laughs> we did mention it, but yeah. Gimaraes, with the little break, was injured, has come back on, and, and Newcastle have been the better side since then. The little reset has helped as they have the ball on the right-hand side. Laid off on the edge of the penalty area, Gimaraes out to the right, and Trippier, who will cross the ball in, and the header from Wilson is straight into the arms of Bert Leno. The first time they've made the Fulham goalkeeper work. Well, it's all came from Longstaff again. A couple of runs in behind. He's just creating space. So if Polina doesn't go with him, they'll give the ball to Longstaff. If he does go, which hasn't happened too often, then they're overloading on that right-hand side again with Almiron. Bruno, every time it comes back to him, he's just looking for either a little thread in between the Fulham defender or he's popping it out right for Trippier down the right-hand side to cross something. But again, Bruno's the key. He's the man that'll make things happen in that Newcastle midfield. They've got to get on top of him. As long as the game goes on, more the space opens out. It's Pereira that's got to do that job in the number 10 in there, the 18. Fulham have the ball on the left-hand side. De Cordova Reed dropping back into his own half and plays it out to the left. And Pereira and Fulham deciding to just enjoy a little bit of possession at the moment after Newcastle's mini revival. Ball out to the right-hand side as well, anticipated and intercepted by Byrne. Loose boot by Joe Linton on Tete, but the ball has gone through to Bernd Leno in the Fulham penalty area anyway so Robert Jones says yes we might as well let that play on and the flow of the game can continue so Leno 
preparing to bowl this ball out. It's one of those as well. If you look at Fulham's success, the signings they've made were shrewd and they've come in and do done very well. I mean, you look at Leno arriving from Arsenal, Pereira, we've mentioned from Manchester United, Polina from Sporting Lisbon. Again, such a talent, the Portugal international, played at the World Cup. November, December as well, as Newcastle win a free kick on the halfway line. It, it just has all come together. And even William, you oh, know, no, the, the, for, the former Chelsea and yeah. Arsenal player who people questioned at, at the age of 33, you know, is this one where he's just going to yeah. come and turn up and not do very much? He's been key. Yeah, you look at also Diop and Ream at the centre-backs there, you know, they, they look like a decent pairing at the minute. Ream has obviously played in the back five for Fulham on many occasions. Free kick from Trippier to the edge of the area for Newcastle. Cleared away by Fulham and Mitrovic will get a foot in and send it out to Harrison Reed, who's bombing down this right-hand side. Good covering block by Joe Linton. Spins out for a Fulham throw. On the halfway line, nil-nil. Yeah, ve yeah, yeah, very even game, isn't it? You know, uh, we talked about Fulham starting the better, but Newcastle have just came into it since that break where Bruno went down. Newcastle were just able to reset. A few of the players on the pitch just having a word with each other. A few of Eddie's coaching staff trying to make sure that, you know, we're not playing too many straight balls. We'll keep getting pressed. You're making it easy for Fulham. All of a sudden, there's loads of movement. There's loads of angles. Everybody wanting it. Playing one and two touch. And starting to mix the play again. It's caused Fulham a few problems. But a really good game, a really even contest so far. I'm really being impressed by Fulham and the way, go, the way they go about the game. Yeah, good match between two sides that are living up to their high position in the table. As Steve Stone says, it's a really good contest here on Five Sports Extra. Nil-nil, 25 minutes played in this first half. Still goalless at Stamford Bridge between Chelsea and Crystal Palace as Tim Ream picks it up on the edge of the Fulham penalty area and Diop will send it out to the right-hand side and Kenny Tete plays it over the halfway line. Fabian Scher is there, calmly, almost to Tam Burn, but in the end he didn't get the distance on it, so he turns and sends it back to Nick Pope instead. Good ball by Pope, good header by Tete to stop Joe Linton getting in down the left Newcastle throw. Sometimes you've just got to turn teams, sometimes you haven't got to be too cute. So they just put it on the back of them and back them off, get them into their half. And that's exactly what Nick Pope did there, put it right on the back of the fullback. And all of a sudden Newcastle are in Fulham's half. Fabian Scher coming forward from centre half, Almiron to Longstaff out to the right hand side is oh, Trippier, good. good block by Lazava. Out on that left hand side and Fulham will clear up towards halfway, but intercepted by Nick Pope coming out of his penalty area. And Newcastle bring it over halfway with Bruno Gimaraes and Joe Willock now picks it up. Sends it to Wilson, central position. Sean Longstaff to Almiron, urge to shoot outside the penalty area, squeezes it into the box to Gimaraes. Almiron out to the right-hand side and Trippier now. Good build up this play by Newcastle as Gimaraes swings it in. Well, they're appealing for the corner. They've got the corner, but the fans were asking about a potential handball there. And the ball goes out of play for a corner to Newcastle. Yeah, I'm just looking at Pereira. He's got to get across and help that. That uh, left-hand side of his, uh, there's too many men of Newcastle on their right. They're just overloading that side of the pitch. And the cooker is in all sorts of problems. Polina's having a difficult afternoon in terms of people behind him, down the sides of him. He marks one and then somebody gets played to the other. So corner taken by Trippier to the far post. Very good take by Bernd Leno. The height was at the back once again for Newcastle. Sven Botman was there, Joe Linton as well. But Leno read it well and bowls it out under arm to Tim Ream. Nil-nil. Yeah, no, we'll see. it's a decent contest. Um, when Fulham need to slow it down, they can do because they're decent in possession um, and they need to do that at times. You really, when you come to St James's Park, one of the first things you must do is try and really calm this crowd down and they've managed to do that so far in spaces and spells. Newcastle have had a five minutes here and a five minutes there, but Fulham will be really happy with the way things have gone so far. They would have probably liked to create more chances in the box. They put things in there. Uh, Newcastle are starting to create a lot down that right-hand side again. We've, we've been here many times and we've seen how Newcastle try to work that side of the pitch. Strong down the left, but really, really strong down that right-hand side. And the coaching staff of that are going to have to identify that from Fulham and try and get that blocked across there. Pereira and Polini are going to have to make sure that they've got their runners and follow people and be diligent with the work that they do. Or they'll create more chances going down the right. Kazava just delaying to take this throw for Fulham. It's intercepted by Trippier and Paulinia on the stretch. Can't dispossess Almiron on the halfway line. And here comes Dan Byrne. Midway through the Fulham half, closed down by Reed and Willian. So sent it out to the left-hand side eventually. And Joe Linton up against Kenny Tete. Turns Kenny Tete. Steps past Willian. Tete just gets back and gets the foot in. And Fulham will bring the ball away. And again, they're so loath to clear long Fulham. Yeah. Tete advancing through his own half. Byrne makes the block. Fulham throw 0-0. Well, Tete 
Tete did well after initially getting too tight to Joel Linton there. Joel Linton turned and spun and driving towards the box. Tete managed to get himself back in there. Did really well. Stuck had a good pace from him. But as he's coming out, he's looking at the top end of the pitch for someone to run down the sides. And he knows he can't get Mirovic to run down the sides. There's no way he can, he's got the pace. He's actually on the other side of the pitch. So he's having to find people like William and Reed in the middle of the park to play little intricate passes. And that's where they can get pressed and it's difficult for them. That's, their, that's probably their weakness. Goalless, Newcastle, play the ball over the top with Fabian Scher. Good defending by Tete, just easing Joe Willock away from the penalty area. And the ball is all the way through with Bernd Leno. Reaction to this match and Chelsea against Crystal Palace, which is still goalless over on Five Live. And of course, the North London derby later to come. You can hear all of that in the Football Daily. Just download that from BBC Sounds. And you might want to check out the Sports Desk podcast while you're there as well. A look at... Saudi Arabia's growing influence in football, of course, here at Newcastle, but with golf as well. Ronaldo moving to the country too. You can download that from BBC Sounds. Fulham inside the penalty area. Pereira comes across, wins the corner. It's, I want to say end-to-end. Yeah, yeah. -end. It's not breathless end-to-end, no. -end, but it's very tactically neatly worked from end-to-end -end by both sides. And yeah. Fulham in the ascendancy in that move. Well, nobody's getting caught on the counter-attack, that's for sure, because both are set up to make sure they've got good distance between the back and front. And they're understanding that if they're not going to get done in behind. But really, you're right, actually, from back to front, real quality player from Fulham there. And from one side of the pitch to the other. So corner kick to be taken from the far side. The light green shirt's on the move in the penalty area, but Robert Jones has spotted an infringement. Cher going down in a tangle with Mitrovic, and the free kick goes the way of Newcastle. Well, that's the first time we've actually seen Lena get out from the back. Give it to Tete, right down the right-hand side to Reed. Then Reed's played into William, who was still all down this side. They try to drag Newcastle right across this side of the pitch. Mitrovic tries to make a run in behind. He takes defenders with him. And William, with a beautiful 40, 50-yard pass right across the pitch, real quality which he's got then sends an overload down that left-hand side. And that's the first time we've really seen Fulham go from back to front with quality. And as the game opens up and there becomes more space, I think you'll probably see more of that from Fulham. Botman in position for Newcastle. Midway inside his own half. Gimaraes will send it back to Fabian Scher, who has the option of long stuff over on the right-hand side. Finds Gimaraes instead as Newcastle... Look to work it down the right. Longstaff just taking up that wide right position with Trippier pushing a little bit further forwards. But they go central now, Newcastle, with Botman. Joe Linton, slightly loose touch. Very well charged down by Kenny Tete, who sat on the ball and blocked it, but <laughs> needs must. He's got no runner again, though, as he... Tete is coming forward. Mitrovic is on the far side of the pitch. There's no way he's getting across. He's looking for William to make that running behind, but that's not William's strength. He's not going to run in behind anymore. He wants the ball to feet, so... You can see where Fulham do struggle with the runs in behind. They've got to get midfield players to break those lines, but they're working so hard to stop Newcastle getting through with such big distances to get at the top end of the pitch. But a good you talked about it earlier, it's a really good, actually smooth tactical battle at the minute. You're right, it's not end-to-end. -end. It's Newcastle trying to play their way through Fulham, down that right-hand side of the minute. And then it's Fulham trying to play their way through Newcastle from both sides of the pitch. They've got tactical players right across that front line. Botman in possession for Newcastle on the halfway line. Yes, it's, it's controlled end-to-end, yeah. end, isn't it? Both yeah. sides are employing and deploying their tactical game plan. It's not the frantic end-to-end -end where yeah. people are, are losing tackles and miscontrols. I mean, we saw a few sloppy passes from Newcastle, but they picked up and here goes Willock picking it up on the left-hand side into the area, pulls it across. Oh, and it's just missed by Callum Wilson. Comes out to the right-hand side as it spins out of the penalty area. Almiron curls a shot in, deflected behind corner. Wilson so close to latching onto that ball inside the six-yard box. If he does, it's one touch, it's 1-0 Newcastle. Well, this time it was a great move down the left-hand side. Willick's got away from his defender, running the box. He's actually trying to just pull one back, and Wilson's made the right thing. He's trying to get across the defender, but as he gets across the defender and he misses the ball, which is he's done the right thing, Newcastle have got to have midfield players arriving in the box for tapping from the penalty spot. I'm not really sure where Longstaff was or Gimaresh. Corner from Trippier from the right-hand side, met by the tall jump of Issa Diop, and then Willock on the volley, blazing wide from the edge of the D. Nil-nil. That never looked comfortable from Willock, as it looked as if it was um, he just had a wild slash at it, as if the run he'd made 60 yards before, he was still breathing from it. He didn't really want that. That's probably not his strong point, but Willock has been dynamic and in the games that we've seen him, drives forward, drives in behind, always pushing in behind. Um, decent quality for his cut back there. Uh, we're just watching Nick Pope's just gone down at the back there, not really sure what's happened with him. Yeah, completely off the ball this, the Newcastle goalkeeper 
sitting down in the middle of the pitch and this will be a concern because we talk about the signings that Fulham made in the summer that have been so positive. Their goalkeeper amongst them, Nick Pope, has, has been outstanding for Newcastle. He's, he's kept a clean sheet, in fact, in his last four Premier League games, his best run in his career in the competition. Well, I was surprised when um, more teams weren't in for Nick Pope. Uh, obviously, I was at Burnley as the first team coach last season and he's instrumental and whenever you're going to have success you need a spine through your team and he is one big spine I'm telling you he's, uh, he's influential in most games if you're going to win a football match you need your keeper to make big saves in, in, in key moments of the game and, and that's exactly what he does so since he's come into Newcastle him and the back four and I think Eddie Howe mentioned as well that it's a team unit so they're pressing from the front but when they do break down those units and people do get through they've got Nick Pope to face and he's, uh, he's a huge influence and a, a really good shot stopper so he's still receiving treatment. Bruno Gimarech has come over to this near side as well. The dugout's just in front of us here in the press box at St. James's Park, receiving a little bit more treatment and having a word with the coaching staff. Clearly not quite over the effects of that knock that he picked up earlier in the first half. Just on Nick Pope, is now standing back up to his feet. What sort of a character is he like nice. behind the scenes? Yeah, Steve? He's, he's, he's a bubbly lad, you know. He's always smiling, always getting involved in everything. You know, he's one of those guys that you want in the dressing room who's a good character but uh, not over the top daft, just someone who's actually, he's actually really bright. He's a bright boy who you want around there. But also in your goalkeeper as well, you want somebody who can be calm at times and be, can be calm at the right moment. So he knows when to, uh, to be one of the lads, but he also knows when he needs to do his job and be professional and get on with stuff. And you don't get to the levels he's got to with England and the rest of it um, without being good. But as a character, you want people like him in your dressing room. Well, he is back up to his feet is good news for Newcastle as Fulham prepared to take this goal kick. Bruno Gimarech is waiting to come back on as well as Bert Leno is jeered by the Newcastle fans for just repositioning that goal kick. We did see Martin de Bradper warming up, Newcastle's substitute goalkeeper, having returned from his loan spell at Manchester United at the start of this month. Only a couple of starts in the League Cup, but Newcastle number one, very much experience in the past here, but Nick Pope, the undisputed number one now, as Wilson comes forward, Reed with the challenge just outside the area, and plays it out to the left-hand side, and Kazava, who plays it over the top, looking for the run of Decord over Reed. Cher will get there, has a little check over his shoulder just to see how close Decord over Reed's getting, plays it back to Pope, and now Botman has it and plays it out to Dan Byrne on the left-hand side. Nil-nil here on Five Sports Extra. Still goalless at Stamford Bridge between Chelsea and Crystal Palace. And our commentary of the North London derby over on Five Live after the conclusion of that game at Stamford Bridge. Trippier plays the ball to the edge of the area. Ream wins the header ahead of Almiron. There's only ever going to be one winner in that aerial battle. And Diop outside his own six-yard box plays it out to the right-hand side good control oh, by William Dan Byrne and Joe Linton just slip at the wrong time then a little push from Willett but William's still going his balance is yeah. gorgeous he goes past Longstaff and plays it out to Harrison Reed as Fulham start to steam through the Newcastle half out to the left-hand side they go now high ball into the area is poor everything but the delivery there oh. for Fulham well they're, they're, they're key moments in the game I think Kazava struggled in the game he hasn't played a lot of football and they've overloaded him on that left-hand side it's been really difficult for him and actually when he's got forward there that's a key moment where you want to put a quality ball into the box sliding challenge by Longstaff to keep hold of possession here is Trippier into the penalty area right hand side slides it down Longstaff pulls it across and Willock was there can't control inside the six yard box and the ball goes behind it got a deflection on the way through and it is a Newcastle corner nil nil well in the challenge on the edge of the box there the Newcastle player wanted it more than the Fulham player and then obviously you've got Kazava who's, who's worked his way forward and then looks like he's toiled a bit looks like fitness already is catching up with him he doesn't follow the runner of the box it's way too easy across that far side they've just swapped Reed, and I think it's um, Polina has crossed that other side and they've swapped him over because he's just not getting tight with anybody they look so weak across that left hand side Fulham Good block in the end by Fulham to send it out for this corner, which Trippier will send in. Good header away by Palinia, jumping on the edge of his six-yard box, sends it up to halfway, and Sean Longstaff, who plays it out first time to the right-hand side, looking for Trippier, headed away by Decord over Reed, but will be collected by Trippier, who now whips the ball, looking for that run at the far post from Joe Linton. Tete wins the header, bounces out of play. Newcastle throw deep in Fulham ter territory. Goal is here on Five Live Sports Extra. Got to see on the other side, the Fulham fullback Tete has done excellent so far. There's been He's been under a lot of pressure. William obviously doesn't double back up as, as much as he used to in his younger days, or if he ever did, to be fair. Um, and Tete's got two and one a lot of occasions, but he's defended the back 
post really well against Joe Linton, who's he's been trying to run him hard, and Willocks overloading as well. So good defending from one Fulham fullback on one side, and not so good on the other side with a boy who's actually come in and not playing much football. Newcastle waste that throw, but they've won it back through Fabian Cher. Lovely turn by Wilson inside the area. Good save by Leno. The angle was disappearing from Wilson. A save you'd expect Burnt Leno to make. Pushes it over the bar. Another Newcastle corner. They're finishing this half strongly. Well, we're talking about them getting down the side of the centre half and having a finish there. But again, Fulham have lost a, a simple tackle in the middle of the pitch. With basic challenge where you, at least you've got to put your foot in and make an attempt to win it. It's as if Reed sort of went in a little bit half-hearted. We're sure that came out with it. Let's play it down the side for Wilson. Great little turn and finish, but good save from the goalkeeper. But you can't lose those 50-50s in the middle of the park in the Premier League. So Trippier with the corner once again goes central this time. Everywhere you go, though. A tall Fulham yeah, player is there. Yeah. This time it's Mitrovic who heads it away as Newcastle go all the way back to Nick Pope. And that's the challenge. Fulham so proficient in both boxes because yeah. of the height they have aerially as the ball is headed on into the penalty area looking for the run of Willock. But it's gathered by Leno who bowls it out underarm to William who again is turning towards Longstaff and now turns back towards his own penalty area. Longstaff putting on the pressure. William goes back to Ream who plays it back to Leno. He's closed down by Callum Wilson. Leno slips as he clears but it's a good clearance good over ball. the halfway good line. Ball. Dan Byrne with the header, nice back heel by Mitrovic. Pereira to Harrison Reed on this right hand side. Can Fulham get back into their stride after a good little spell for Newcastle United? Nil nil here on Five Sports Extra. Five minutes to play. Is this a D op? Goes all the way back to Burnt Leno, and now they play the ball out to the left hand side. And Lavin Kazava, he plays it in field to Tim Ream, advancing through his own half. Off he goes, Ream, in field to Pereira. Well, close down by Joe Linton, but brilliant turn from Pereira who's then fouled by Joe Willock. I mean, some of the skills, and it, oh. they're not audacious, they're not fancy, they're not showy, but there's just so much confidence at the moment from players like Pereira and Willian as Pereira tries to catch Trippier out on the right-hand side, looking for decoy over Reed with the quick free kick, but Trippier is alert to it, it's back with Pope, and now Botman has it midway through his own half. Well, that's, well, that's where Fulham have got a good mix in the side, haven't you? You can see they've got good presence, they've got good physical presence in there. Um, but when there's a little bit of skill needed, they've got that as well. They've got that little bit of ability. And Pereira, you're right, has, uh, has shown some great moments. William especially as well, shown some good moments as well. Good ball by Trippier. Wilson pulls it across. There's nobody there on the edge of the six-yard box. It's cleared away by Kenny Tete for Fulham. Newcastle will send it back once again. Wilson picks it up right-hand side of the penalty area. Blocked away. And then cleared at the second attempt by Decord over Reed. Got a deflection on the way through, but Newcastle pick it back up. And again, Newcastle pick it up right hand side. Gimarace tried the back heel to Wilson. Comes out to Longstaff. Headed away by Kenny Tete. Once more, Newcastle really pushing. Longstaff went down. No free kick. Well, initially, yeah, yeah. it looked like no free kick given. Pereira on Longstaff, but in the end, Robert Jones does blow his whistle, and this is a very good set piece opportunity. Best part of 25 yards out, central position, free kick Newcastle, 0 0. Well, it, uh, it looked a very soft free kick, we've got to say. Good pressure from Newcastle, putting the ball in the back, trying to then get it back in. Longstaff goes down really easy, but I think he's given the opportunity, Pereira, by just hanging a leg out, just putting his foot up. He'd be really disappointed to give a free kick away in such a such a good position with the likes of Kieran Trippier on the pitch and Bruno it's a perfect spot for them isn't it yeah and Fabian shares there as well we've seen him hit a few but you would think surely surely it would be Trippier his three goals that he scored for Newcastle since arriving last year have all been free kicks he scored once this season that was a stunner against Manchester City back in August Rob Jones is just saying, no, that's not where the foul occurred. And Kieran Trippier, it's like Rob Jones has moved the ball, the referee. Kieran Trippier almost picked the ball back up to remove it. Well, whether he agrees or not, Trippier, he's going to have to abide by the decision of the official. I think that is a little bit further back so than where the initial foul yep. took place. So now we're about best part of 30 yards out, yep. still central position. Gives him a little bit more ability in terms of angle to get it up and over the wall but it, it would have to be pretty special from here but then again we know that Kieran Trippier is pretty special in these situations yeah I don't think how far it is out for Kieran I think he's got the ability to get it up and over the wall just gives that goalkeeper a little bit more time to see the ball coming it was a good five yards from where he was originally going to take it so Trippier repositioning this free kick two minutes to play plus out of time in this first half can Newcastle find the breakthrough Cher is there as well a possibility 
Trippier is the probability. And it is Trippier. It's straight into the wall. Good leap by Tim Ream. And Bernardo applauds as the ball spins behind for a Newcastle corner. Got good power on it. It's on target, definitely. Fulham wall jumped. They've got such height in that Fulham wall as well. They've got some big guys in the team. They're a physical side as well as being able to play. I do like the mix, what they've got. So Newcastle have played the corner short. Gimmeresh and Almiron work it back to Trippier, who now plays the ball in. And the run was being made again at the far post, this time by Botman. Tete wins not one header, but two, and sends it out of the penalty area as Fulham looks to counter. Pereira is racing down this right-hand side, but the back pass from Trippier just reaches Nick Pope. Goodness me, Harrison Reid was almost inadvertently played in there by Trippier, but Pope, good anticipation, came out of the penalty area, clears it out for a Fulham throw. Fine oh, margin, yeah. Steve Stone. Well, Trippier's running back and you're looking as he's going, you're thinking you've got to get full contact on the ball when you go back here. If you scuff it, he's coming through, he's expecting that. And uh, Pope was in a really good start position to start with, but going back to the corner as well, Tetty again at the back post, he's got two men on him. He's defended unbelievably well at the back post so far. Harrison Reed has nicked it inside the Newcastle half forward to Mitrovic and now Palini a good interception almost by Almiron but it's picked up by Kazava on the left hand side as Fulham looks to spread it to decode over Reed. Newcastle win the header and it's out for a Fulham throw. Well I'm expecting a little bit more from Palini in those sort of situations. That ball's got to get there. He's a real quality player. Defensively I'm expecting a bit more from him. He needs to get around the pitch and be a little bit more authoritative with the players in front of him. He's got to start dragging people around him because people are playing it around him. It's not easy for him. He needs to use his experience to get this team around him a little bit more on that right-hand side. Also in possession, I think he's got to be more assertive. He's got real quality. He's floating balls in there. He's got to drill it in there. The quality that he's got, you know, he can make the difference. He's got Reed playing alongside him, who's who's having a right good go. He's using all the energy he's got, playing it short, playing it long, being a combative midfield player, but really he needs to just up his game, Pauline, alongside him. And that's his teammates alongside him as well. He needs to use his voice and his experience because he's getting overrun down that right-hand side. Newcastle in possession inside their own penalty area as we enter three minutes of added time at the end of this first Straight half after the challenge and the injury to Gimmeres. As Newcastle bring the ball down the right-hand side, can they find the breakthrough? Almiron has Trippier on the overlap. Almiron goes central instead to Gimmeres, try the little one-two, good header away by Decord over Reed, and Palinia will clear up, but not quite away on the edge of his own area. Header is one and sent forward oh. by Longstaff. Lovely turn, Wilson. Goodness me, so close for Newcastle. Burnt Leno gathers. Wilson looking for the curler in the bottom corner. It was lovely control inside the penalty area. Leno equal to the effort. Well, Newcastle win another second ball in the middle of the park. It's just a simple header. Fulham have just got to do better with the second balls. The basics of fighting and strapping in the middle of the park. They've probably lost too many. Goes straight into Wilson, who turns with a beautiful little turn. Nobody expected, but once he's opened himself up, he's just expecting him to slide it in that far corner. Keep us ready, but that's the best chance of the game by far. William plays the ball forward, got a little deflection on the way through, and it will go out for a Fulham throw midway through the Newcastle half. Nil nil. Two and a half minutes of added time to play here at St James's Park. It's still goalless on five live between Chelsea and Crystal Palace at Stamford Bridge. As Tete prepares to take this throw for Fulham. Sends it long. Harrison Reid is pushed over there, is he, by Joe Willock. Eventually, the play is stopped. Reid is down. And Rob Jones, I think, is saying that this may be a drop ball here. Fulham is saying, well, hang on a minute. We feel like we should have a free kick. <laughs> Steve Stone? Well, no, it's definitely not a free kick. As the ball's gone in and from the throw-in, he's actually uh, anticipated the nudge in the back. Reed, and it hasn't come and he's fell over and it looks like a bit of a dive. <laughs> he's tried to win the free kick in a wide area. Then he's got the ball stuck in between his legs. The Newcastle players are starting to trample all over him. So, the referee's made the right decision in terms of stopping it before somebody gets hurt. Uh, and I'm expecting a drop ball from it, unless he's going to give it to Newcastle to, to actually kick it back to to Fulham it's a, it's a strange I don't, I don't know what he's actually going to do here I think it's going to be an uncontested drop ball to Newcastle for Reed not releasing the ball essentially when he fell on it so Newcastle do you have the drop ball and they send it long over the halfway line Harrison Reed wins the header but Wilson was being pulled back it's just all getting a little bit scrappy in the last minute or so and 
Well, Newcastle be able to fashion an opportunity and Marco Silva's right out on the edge of the touchline, Eddie Howe as well, but Eddie Howe generally a, a calmer figure, Marco Silva, one of those managers you can see that he's kicking every ball down there in this technical area. Well, he's realising that um, there's three minutes of injury time and this is a really, really important part of the game where you need to manage the game and, and calm it down really, really quickly. That's why Diop's probably made that foul on the halfway line. He doesn't want to get counter-attacked. Good tactical foul from him. So, free kick to Newcastle, just inside the Fulham half. Fulham are holding a high line, about 10 yards or so outside their own penalty area. Trippier is standing over this. He drifted into that line of black and white shirts. The header is won by Palina, comes out to Almiron, drives a low shot. Leno right behind it. And there is the half-time whistle. Well, Steve Stone, fourth against sixth. It's been a real contest. It's goalless, but we've seen some good play from both sides. Well, we've seen some really good play from both sides. Both players have mixed it up really well, both teams. And you can see why the fourth and sixth in the league, the quality that they've got. They know they know defensively that they both look strong. There's not been that many action in both boxes, I've got to be honest. Newcastle down the right-hand side, again, looking strong where they always are. Left-hand side, a couple of occasions. Fulham have struggled in terms of once they have got their play and they have broke the line, trying to get enough balls and enough quality in the box for Mitrovic at the minute. There hasn't been enough there. Newcastle, again, coming down that right-hand side, they've been really, really good. And if I was... Uh, Newcastle manager at half time, obviously keep, over, keep overloading that right hand side but making sure you're getting Willick and Wilson in the box where they're going to score in between the six yard box there's no point just Wilson being in there they've got to get more bodies in there there's too many men out wide for me, for me Newcastle at the minute too many men on the edge of the box get bodies in the box, overload there and you're bound to just get a tap in and from a Fulham perspective, what would you look to see from them in the second half? Well, well, Fulham have got to just continue doing exactly what they've done. You know, they've got to stay in the game. They've got to be compact. They can't go pressing if Mirovic is going to go and they haven't got the press behind them. From the start, they did that. But then the gap starting to open up a little bit once Newcastle put a few balls in behind. From Fulham's point of view, they must stay in the game as long as they possibly can to try and get something they a set player across. Because at the minute, they're not dominating the game. They had a good 15, 20 minutes spell to start with. But it was all about them keeping the ball and working the way up the pitch. Newcastle have pressed them really well after the 20 minutes and Fulham I think at times have caused their own problems giving it away at the back they will play from the back and they'll keep going it's just an interesting game isn't it it's a really good tactical interesting game by two really good sides the thoughts of former England midfielder Steve Stone with us here on 5 Sports Extra we will be back in just under 15 minutes for the second half and at half time at St James's Park Newcastle United nil Fulham nil London Irish's European hopes are over. The Stormers are very much alive. Impressive uh, win for Edinburgh at Cast, though. Absolutely, yes. And Edinburgh are just proving, we, and this is why we look at the, the makeup of the tournament uh, as well, Steve. Eight, eight teams go through into that last stages from each side. So the, the last 16 in this Champions Cup format is always really intriguing. Uh, James, thank you very much indeed. Cast 21, Edinburgh 34. That's the European Champions Cup in the Challenge Cup. It's currently Cardiff 42, Newcastle Falcons 10. Back to the Masters snooker final. Judd Trump and Mark Williams watched by Jamie Broughton. Well, Judd Trump, who's trying to become a two-time Masters champion, had to sit in his seat and watch Mark Williams win the opening frame with a brilliant break of 138. But since, since then, it's been the Bristol star that has played the better snooker. He hit back with breaks of 61 and 106 to lead 3-1 at the mid-session interval. We're back underway after the break. There have been chances for both players in this frame five and a few uncharacteristic misses as well. Trump, though, is back at the table now. He's on a break of 43 with a good chance to extend his lead to 4-1 10 is the target to be crowned champion. Jamie, thank you very much indeed. On BBC Two right now, you've got the final match of that series between England and Jamaica in the netball. The series is tied at one all, uh, and it's currently England 34, Jamaica 35 in the third quarter. So that looks like it's going to be a thrilling finish. We'll make our first trip of the afternoon to the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium next. Spurs Arsenal, North London Derby, live in full at 4.30. Once we're done at Stamford Bridge, second half commentary on the way. Chelsea nil, Crystal Palace nil. All of that to Come after the news with Stuart Clarkson. Listen on BBC Sounds. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. Steve, thank you. Good afternoon. Police say a seven-year-old girl is in a critical condition after a shotgun was fired from a moving car outside a church in central London yesterday. Five other people were also hurt in the attack near Euston Station, which happened as crowds left a memorial service. The search for survivors of a plane crash in Nepal has been called off for the evening. The aircraft was carrying 72 passengers. At least 68 of those have been confirmed dead. The flight from Kathmandu closed 
cla crashed close to an airport near the tourist town of Pokhara. The Labour leader, Sir Keir Starmer, has told the BBC he doesn't support 16-year-olds being able to change their legal gender. He says he has concerns about legislation passed in Scotland last month. And the Transport Secretary says he's backed rail operating companies to make a new pay offer to unions this week. Mark Harper told the BBC both sides are keen to reach an agreement, but says the details still need to be hammered out. <laughs> On BBC iPlayer, we got to fight the powers that be. The story of a movement that changed the world. Hip hop was created by the oppression because it was our arts that defended us against the oppression. Told by the artists who lived it. When hip hop started, it started from the rubble. My art mimics me. So when you listen to my music, you're getting all the facets of Ice T. And me, Chuck D. Hip hop has saved lives. Fight the power. How hip hop changed the world. Starts Saturday night on BBC. The iPlayer. This is Five Live Sport with Steve Crossman. Welcome back to Premier League Sunday. Chelsea nil, Crystal Palace nil. Second half commentary on the way. We've got the second semi-final of the Scottish League Cup at Hamden this afternoon. Gets underway in five minutes' time. Either Rangers or Aberdeen will face Celtic in the final. Celtic beat Kilmarnock last night and Roddy Forsyth is there for us. Yes, and I'm glad to say that the weather's in complete contrast to yesterday's monsoon gale. It uh, remains to be seen how the, hitch, the pitch is going to hold up after the battering it took in the first semi-final. Ange Postacoglu, the Celtic manager, said after that game that it had been below standard. Now these teams, Rangers and Aberdeen, met at Pataudry three weeks ago when Aberdeen led in injury time before conceding goals to Scott Arfield five and seven minutes into the added period. That's nourished a sense of grievance amongst the Don players and their support. And Jim Goodwin feels the team unchanged from their 2-0 victory over St Johnson against the Rangers side unbeaten in eight under Michael Beale. They show two changes from the winning lineup uh, with Alan McGregor and Alfredo Morelos starting. Speaking of Morelos, hasn't the uh -huh. Aberdeen captain got himself into some trouble around oh, yeah. him? Yes, he did. Anthony Stewart said in the build-up, he's having a chat uh, in the semi-final press conference, and someone said to him, who do you rate the better striker, Antonio Cholak or Morelos? Now, there's a trap there, of course, if you start answering these questions. But Anthony Stewart said that he and his teammates rated Cholak as better than Morelos. <laughs> Jim Goodwin, the Aberdeen manager, summoned him to his office, then subsequently said that was a regrettable comment and wouldn't you know it Cholak misses out through injury so it's the Colombian striker who faces his distractors from the Granite City <laughs> you see it's right it is a trap but it's not a difficult trap to get out of you just say oh, I don't like to talk about players from another team oh, anyway you, you would have thought so that's what media training is for ah uh, you go you see uh, Aberdeen have only won one trophy haven't they since since 1990 it was this competition and it was yes it's been uh, there's been sparse pickings for Aberdeen a team who many think should be the third force in Scotland and of course who at one point were the power in the land uh, under Sir Alex Ferguson before his knighthood days right enough but uh, yes there, there's a real hunger amongst the support they've brought a big support with them over to our right and we'll hear them the teams are uh, uh, gathered in the tunnel so we're going to be hearing from them very shortly but yes it would be a major achievement for Jim Goodwin and his Aberdeen players if they could annex a trophy at last Thank you Roddy Roddy will keep us bang up to date we've got commentary of Tottenham Arsenal in the North London derby from half past four on Five Live and BBC Sounds let's make our first First trip of the day to the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. That's where we find correspondent John Murray and Clinton Morrison. Good afternoon, both. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Crossy. John, great arena for what is always a great fixture. Yes, and uh, it's another one of those matches this season. They seem to be coming along almost not a, on a weekly basis. They seem to be coming along on a daily basis where you uh, sit there ahead of the match and think, goodness me this is important for both teams and it's a North London derby so it speaks for itself but I think after the events at uh, Old Trafford yesterday the fact that Arsenal can come here and put themselves eight points clear at the top of the Premier League um, but the, on the other side of, co of that coin Tottenham really need a result they need a result the fans here are desperate for a result if it comes against Arsenal all the better and um, Antonio Conte down there on the edge of the coaching area this afternoon will need a result as well so uh, lots to play for and that coaching area could be uh, busy this afternoon Clinton knowing those two managers 
Yeah, definitely. Both managers like to get involved. They like to <laughs> throw their arms in the air. And they're, they're passionate, though. They're both top managers, passionate about the game. Sometimes it can border over the top because I didn't. when I saw Arteta doing it against Newcastle, I thought he, he slightly went over the top. But I do like the passion. It just shows passion because if you have managers that are just standing there, fans don't like that. But sometimes you, you can't cross that line. And sometimes these managers do it, but they're passionate about the game. Antonio Conte has been sent off twice this season to <laughs> two red cards. And and, uh, and of course, Arsenal are currently facing charges, yeah. FA charges for their players surrounding referees. Mm. In back-to-back -back fixtures as well. <laughs> um, yeah. th there's an odd one, Clinton, with the, the time in the season versus the time in the year because obviously of the World Cup break. I mean, yeah. Arsenal still won't be halfway through their Premier League season, even after that game. But despite that, it is the kind of week you look at and wonder if it will be not season defining but not a million miles away because it's Spurs today and then Manchester United next Sunday yeah and that's a tough game the net, um, obviously today's it's a North London derby and uh, we do make Arsenal favourites because their form they're in at the moment Tottenham are not in brilliant form they're reliant on one man and that's Harry Kane we'll probably speak about him a lot later on in the show but it, it is this is a huge week for Arsenal Football Club because Man United has, after that result against Man City they don't think they're still in the title race and could cause an upset and it's a big game it's a big and it's a big week for um, Arsenal and Arteta would have drilled that into his players when you were coming up the stairs Clinton yeah. I, I came up in the lift and yeah. there was an Arsenal fan in the lift who said to me so this is one fan one fan's opinion <laughs> he said he said if we win today will win the league. Oh, wow. They, they still got to <laughs> play Man City I twice said, and hang, Man United. I said, hang on. <laughs> hang on a minute. Exactly. <laughs> It's um, oh. it's potentially a really big day for Harry Kane as well. F funnily enough, John, I, I was just having a chat with Roddy about when players are asked questions and actually it's easier than you'd think to avoid them. Uh, Eric Dyer was asked about Harry Kane equaling and then potentially breaking Jimmy Greaves' scoring record at Spurs and he said it would be even more special to do it against them. And then he paused and said, but you know, we're getting ahead of ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what will be said after the match if, uh, if he scores it. But listen, I mean, he's going to get it at some point, obviously. Uh, one more goal to equal Jimmy Greaves' Tottenham goal-scoring record and uh, and obviously two to, to break it and make the record his own. Um, but it would be, wouldn't it? I mean, he'd want to do it here. Mm. He'd want to do it on his home ground. And were Arsenal the uh, opponents, then all the better. Uh, John Clinton, thank you very much. Full commentary on the way from 4.30. Of course, we'll get the build-up underway at 4 o'clock once we're done at Stamford Bridge. Second half commentary of Chelsea versus Crystal Palace on the way. Chelsea's women's team uh, have already drawn one all with Arsenal this afternoon and that means that they keep a three-point lead at the top of the WSL table. Here's the Chelsea manager, Emma Hayes, with Robin Cowan. Tremendous character from the team, uh, particularly the finishers that came from the bench. I thought they made the difference for us in the second half. Um... We changed shape after the goal. I thought that helped us. I thought we grew into the game without creating enough. First half, like I said, KG penalty, the difference at least in terms of you know, them having anything that's clear cut. But I, I think it's a wonderful point away from home in the stadium in a derby game. In terms of um, the insight into how you make those little tweaks, those tactical changes and also the changes in personnel, I mean, it's, it must be very difficult, that's, and that's part of your job to be decisive in those yeah. big moments. Yeah, I, I'm annoyed at myself for not doing it a little sooner. Um, I felt we started to lose a grip on the midfield and uh, Kim was growing in the game and I was just about to change it when the penalty came. So, whatever, changed it, went to a 3-5-2, I thought it really worked and... You know, I, I will say this, it's not easy for a new player to come into the club, then go into a game in a packed stadium. I thought they came in and added so much value. And most importantly, we didn't panic. We, just, we kept playing to the end. And yes, it's a late equaliser. And But listen, the game is 90 minutes for a reason. There's no point in talking about, you know, deserving, you know, this or that. They were well played to Arsenal. But for us, I think it's a massive point game. Chelsea manager Emma Hayes. So Chelsea top on 28 points. Arsenal second on 25. And Manchester United look like they're going to join them on 25 because they're beating Liverpool 3-0 at half-time in their game. All the highlights later after match of the day on the women's football show. Second half commentary then from Stamford Bridge. Ball is on the centre spot. Pat Nevins with Ali Bruce Ball. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, Mason Mount getting ready to go for Chelsea. They're all in blue. Blue shirts, blue shorts. Well, I say all in blue. The socks are white with blue hoops around them and Crystal Palace 
uh, pretty much all in white. White shirts, white shorts, but blue socks with the red tops defending the goal in front of the Matthew Harding stand away to our right-hand side. Pat Nevin's return with a half-drunk bucket of coffee. Did you see Mikhailo Mudrik uh, make his appearance, Pat, on the, uh, on the Stamford Bridge pitch at half-time? Yeah, there's a lot of whispering up here. Whether the, He's on there, he's been introduced, but... Is the deal officially over the line? Oh, I see. Um, but <laughs> certainly it would be a wee bit embarrassing. You'd hope so. <laughs> if, it, if he didn't get it in the end, but yeah. uh, no, he's a player that uh, I've seen a bit of, and I have to say, he's a very, very, very special one. They were waiting for the... The thing they were waiting for was the, the, the medical to go through. Yeah. Everyone was talking about that. Um, but hopefully the medicals have all come through, and in yeah. that case, the contract tick. will be ratified. I think we can tick that box. So, confirm. commentary He's from Stamford Bridge, Chelsea against Crystal Palace continuing over on Five Live. Welcome back to Five Sports Extra. Here at St James's Park, I'm Vicky Spark. Alongside me is the former England midfielder, Steve Stone. And Steve, we've seen a change at half time, and it's one we expected. Bruno Guimaraes not able to continue, went down the tunnel in tears at the break after picking up a knock in the first half. The player who's come on, though, interesting one, mm -hmm. because it'll be a, 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 a different style of player in Alan St. Maximan who's replaced him. Well, both teams are cancelling each other out at the minute. I mean, Bruno was still. He's, uh, he's excellent self first off, you know, he's inventive in everything that he does, but we see with about 15 minutes ago, he, he hurt himself when he was going in for a press. It was surprising that he actually stayed on the pitch for as long as he did. But it's the maximum what he can do in a game, which is where they cancel each other out. He can be the difference. He's got the X factor, hasn't he? It's whether then he can stay in his shape as well on the other side and his defensive side and, uh, and uh, or, or can Fulham exploit that. So underway in this second half, Newcastle in possession and Joe Willett picked it up outside the penalty area. Here is the maximum plays it in, looking for Wilson. Good challenge by Ream, blasted over by Longstaff on the edge of the penalty area. But Steve Stone, I think that's what's known as the commentator's anti-curse. You call something, it happens immediately oh. with Alan St. Maximan. Well, he actually got himself in a really good position. He's, uh, he's jinked pass one then he's given a little one two he's in the box and he's tried to actually pass I was actually thinking he was just going to shift it onto his right hand side and fire it in the bottom corner at least try to make the keeper make a save um, and from a forwards point of view you're always thinking go and take this shot it could go through his legs could get deflected but the pass when you're only 15 yards out it's not something you would expect from a player like St Maxim he's normally the one that tries to take him on Fulham coming down the other end playing from right to left in the second half as the offside flag goes up on the far side against Decord over Reed. Fulham playing in the light green changed kits today with the checked front of the shirt. Newcastle in the traditional black and white striped shirts. The black shorts and the black socks in possession midway through their own half. Goal is here on five sports extra. Cher slips as he plays it forward. Harrison Reed gets the foot in, sends it out to this right hand side, and Almiron Kazava gets a foot in and sends it over the halfway line for Fulham. Back by Fabian Scher, looking for Amaron. Kazava is there again, heads away over the head of Palinia, cleared away by Fulham all the way to Nick Pope, who's in goal for Newcastle. The back four of Trippier, Scher, Botman and Byrne. Longstaff, Willock and Joe Linton now in that midfield three with Almiron, St Maximan and Wilson up top. Newcastle still in possession with Botman outside their own area. Fulham, no changes for them. Leno in goal, back four of Tete, Diop, Reem and Kazava. Palinia and Reed ahead of them with Decord over Reed, Pereira and William supporting Mitrovic up front as St Maximan picks the ball up on the left hand side. Couple of step overs as he takes on Kenny Tete, then plays it out to Joe Linton in the orange boots. Well challenged by Issa Diop and the ball goes out of play for a Newcastle throw taken quickly by St Maximan. Back to Sean Longstaff midway through the Fulham half. Newcastle starting the second period with real intent. Looking for the breakthrough here against the side sitting oh, oh. two places and four points below them as Newcastle win a free kick on this near side the right Miguel Almiron going down and the yellow card is out and the yellow card is brandished to Levin Kurzawa the Fulham left back well we talked at half time about Newcastle trying to overload that right hand side again with Kurzawa who hasn't played any football at all this season I think that the only one he did was against Newcastle yeah in the only Premier League year. appearance it's, uh, it's his second yeah. start of the season played in the FA Cup as well uh, in terms of outside the Premier League but as you say such looks, little football this season yeah, it's very difficult for him he's actually you can see that as well Amron's just come short there just whipped one behind him and he's, he's out to pull him down he's just not at the pace of the game yeah, in for the suspended Anthony Robinson, who was always going to be a big miss for Fulham. 
Newcastle have this free kick from the right-hand side. Trippier whips it in, right-footed, poor delivery from Trippier. Well, he was looking for the far post run again, but nobody on the same wavelength there for Newcastle. And the ball spins out of play for a Fulham throw as Marco Silva walks back towards his technical area. He was quite strong on the scheduling of, not of this match per se, but playing Chelsea on Thursday night, Marco Silva. Not happy at all that they played Thursday evening and, and Sunday this afternoon said it was really dangerous for the players in terms of the schedule also not fair that Newcastle have such a different amount of time to prepare now now we see these scheduling complaints yeah. a lot but Thursday night was the key he, he was annoyed that that Premier League game against Chelsea was scheduled for them rather than earlier in the week when Newcastle played on the Tuesday in the League Cup Newcastle in possession midway through their own half yeah well you can understand managers when they probably could play the day before um, when both teams have got the opportunity to do that but did beat Chelsea didn't they Oh, what's he complaining about? <laughs> Ball down the right-hand side for Newcastle, picked up by Almiron. He's hugging that right-hand touch line, plays it in field. Willett goes for the 1-2, loops the ball up. Decod over Reed is back there. Picks the ball up by his own corner flag. Does he keep that in? Referee says no. Almost very nice from Decord over Reed, but couldn't quite keep it in. And that will be a throw to Newcastle deep in Fulham territory and noticeable that Decord over Reed since Kozawa's picked up that yellow card he's just come right back hasn't he just to help double up on Newcastle's yeah. right Fulham's left well the manager's obviously seen it he's uh, he's realised that they're, they're so dominant down here and they, they continue to do that they've got four across here against their three it's an overload tactic that Newcastle use really well uh, and Fulham have got to get out here and try and stop it and follow the one twos and the, the little give and goes in these wide areas here we go again very nicely played by Trippier down to Almiron good sliding challenge from Kozawa and it will be a Newcastle corner and Trippier already over to take it. Yeah, well, Kazava obviously we talked about, he struggled. We've got Reed who's come across to help Polina. We've got Pereira who's dropped back in there as well. And they're all trying to drop in just to make sure Newcastle don't get these give and goes down this side. So corner to be taken from this right-hand side for Newcastle. Mm. Kieran Trippier will send it into the edge of the six-yard box and the header is wide from Callum Wilson. What a chance that was, Wilson picking up a great position but can't get the header on target well, what a great ball in first and foremost you see the quality is absolutely terrific from Trippier playing it in I think it's Botman that's just probably gotten the way of Wilson he's just missed it and Wilson has just come in a flash just got his head on it he's got no real control of wherever the ball's going because he's seen it so late but another good opportunity well he scored the early opener against Fulham in the reverse fixture in the Premier League this season. Six for the season, Callum Wilson. Even though he has struggled a bit with injury and illness of late as well. Fulham coming down the right-hand side with William. Has Tete as an option, but William finds Reed instead. Right-hand side of the penalty area, tries to pull it across. And it's Fulham's turn to get a yeah. corner. Well, good play. Switch it out to the right-hand side. William's sitting there. He's used a little bit of nouse there just to slide one down the side for Reed, who's been all over the pitch. He's been excellent today. Wherever the ball has been, he's been around it. He's been combative, making forward runs. He's trying to get his team right on the front foot. And, he's, you know, he's broke lines there and got a corner. So corner for Fulham to take from the far side. Pereira is over it, swings it towards the penalty spot. And the header is looped over by Paulinho. Mitrovic was there as well. And we just saw that at the other end, Steve, didn't we? It's yeah. almost those two got in each other's way a little bit. Well, he definitely got in his way again. But um, the ball coming in has got to be probably a little bit better. Um, and I, I just believe they're, they're real opportunities and key moments for Fulham in this game. When they get opportunities to put set players in the box, you know, you've got to put your foot through and you've got to whiz it. You've got to gamble on putting a really good ball in the box. There's no, no point putting something floaty and safe in. You've really got to go for it with the height that Fulham have got on their team. Nice header by Joe Linton to find St. Maximin who's off down the left-hand side. At least he was until he ran into Harrison Reed, yeah. who slid in. Great challenge. Reed furious because he thinks that got a touch off the Frenchman. But our referee Robert Jones says that is a throw to Newcastle midway through the Fulham half. Seven and a half minutes gone in this second half. It's goalless on five sports extra. Still nil-nil at Stamford Bridge between Chelsea and Crystal Palace as Callum Wilson is penalised down the left-hand side. Free kick to Fulham just outside their own penalty area and our coverage of the North London derby commentary coming up of Tottenham against Arsenal at 4.30. That's over on Five Live. Well, this game needs a goal to spark it into life, doesn't it? We've, uh, we've talked about how tactical it is. We've talked about the chances Newcastle have created down the right-hand side. Now Fulham have blocked that off. 
Can they switch it outside to some maximum to try and overload down that side? That'll be the key. And then Fulham, from their point of view, can they get the ball up to Mitrovic to hold up so then they can get some runners beyond them? Because they haven't held the ball up well enough. They just haven't had the opportunities. A couple of set plays where they've looked dangerous from. Be expecting a little bit better from them. Or are Fulham happy with the game, with the way it's going at the minute? Are they quite happy that it's nil-nil and they're quiet and the crowd down and Newcastle on firing on all cylinders the way they have been? It's a really tactical, interesting game, but it needs something just to spark it into life. Fulham in possession, midway through their own half, go all the way back to Burnt Leno. Newcastle pressing high with St. Maximan and that Almiron, but Ream steps yeah. away from the Paraguayan well. And here goes Pereira, tried to slide it through to decode over Reed. Trippier got a foot in. Dangerous opening cut out by Newcastle, but Fulham had possession once again. Here is Pereira, 360, midway through the Newcastle half, plays it out to the left-hand side, and Kazava, and will be picked up by D. Cordova Reed. Kazava's continued into the area. D. Cordova Reed plays the ball behind, and it takes a deflection, and it will be a Fulham corner. Well, Newcastle came on the press. Um, Fulham broke the press, and all of a sudden, Fulham are right in on the backside of Newcastle didn't really weren't dynamic enough with it in the wide area but would be delighted to get a corner and slow the game down and up trot the big boys again Diops ominously wandering in there yeah Green to Palinia he's got a real height on him as well and of course mm. Alexander Mitrovic is standing almost on the goal mm. line right next to Nick Pope Pereira standing over this corner for Fulham movement in that six yard box and Pope swings a fist at it as it was curling towards the goal. Well, Pereira trying something there. Mitrovic, we mentioned, was on the goal line. Whether he was going for Mitrovic, whether he was going for goal, Nick Pope kept his focus and punches it behind for another corner. Well, we talked about the quality having to be top drawn. Pereira there, he's absolutely fizzed one in across there. And as you said, Mitrovic has tried to get across the near post. And I think that's probably where he's trying to aim for, just to overhit it, just a touch. But at least he's put some conviction on it. So now he'll have a chance, Andreas Pereira, from the right-hand side for Fulham. That's a poor delivery, but it almost falls for Mitrovic. He is muscled off it, though. No mean feat that. And Newcastle can counter. Here is Wilson. Willett looking to stay on side, but the ball is through to Leno. I think Willett might have just gone a fraction early. Newcastle not making the most of that as Leno picks the ball up once again. But St James's Park raises its voice as Newcastle press Fulham outside their own penalty area. Kazava turns away from Trippier under pressure from Almiron. He's done well there, yeah. Levin Kazava. PSG Loney making just his third start for Fulham since arriving in the summer. As Fulham come down the right-hand side and Tete will find William. Nil-nil here on 5 Sports Extra. 11 minutes gone in this second half. Still goalless at Stamford Bridge between Chelsea and Crystal Palace. Commentary of that match is over on 5 Live as Fulham have the ball in the centre circle. Steve well, Stone. We're just looking at Fulham. Uh, there's been a couple of occasions here where they broke Newcastle's press. And I think Newcastle's press today hasn't been quite as energetic and as top draw as it has been in other games that we've seen. They normally win the ball really hard at the pitch, but Fulham have used real quality and some really good movement coming in off the line, spinning in behind. And, uh, and of course Newcastle problem in those areas and once they break it it's difficult for Newcastle but that's the interesting tactical bit we're seeing when Fulham do break it though and they do get behind them they're still really on breaking Newcastle down they're just getting through the press but then there's no quality at the top end of the pitch to actually get a shot on target Newcastle in possession midway through the Fulham half on the right hand side with Trippier stepping away from Decord over Reed and Trippier all the way back to Fabian Scher do you know what I love to do Steve I love to watch Marco Silva and try and work out what on earth those animated hand gestures mean I mean this one is fairly straightforward his right palm facing upwards moving it towards the Newcastle half he wants Fulham to push up but <laughs> when they lost the ball earlier Fulham there were whirling arms he was jumping up and down I mean he's not happy we can tell that as Fulham clear away nil nil with Newcastle and they put in a decent showing but as Steve says it just needs a little spark a yeah. little moment of brilliance from either side in what has been an evenly contested game between fourth and sixth in the Premier League. Trippier coming forward for Newcastle. Cher tried to dig it through to Wilson. Ream makes the block, plays it forward to Pereira, nicely trapped. Now Cher's gone in there, won the ball. Pereira goes down, Cher stays down as well. Play on, says Robert Jones. St. Maximan thinks the ball into the area. Will it chest it down? Corner of the six yard box. Force back out of the box. Comes to St. Maximan once more. Looking to get the cross in, the Frenchman finally does. Cleared away by Diop on the volley on the edge of the six yard box. Picked up by Longstaff. And Newcastle will come again down this right-hand side with Fabian Scher, the centre-half, who's stepping up forward into the Fulham 
territory as they work it out to the right hand side here is Almiron nil nil here on five sports extra as Trippier swings the ball into the area and Leno will watch that all the way inside his six yard box and claim comfortably yeah but the game's actually sparked into life a little bit again without that many chances being created a lot of midfield play a lot of Newcastle getting towards the edge of Fulham's box and then the quality not being quite right but on the other side now Newcastle have got something from the left-hand side in St Maximum so they can go both sides where we talked about they were very right side dominant first half have now got two options to go for be interesting to see though because St Maximum stays quite high and wide on that far side the space for William in between the lines to drift off the back of Joe Lynn it'll be interesting to see how the game just opens up you can just sense both teams shape just a little bit just stretching a little bit where the gaps are opening up nil nil 14 minutes gone in this second half decoded over reed has just inadvertently nutmegged his own manager marco <laughs> silver as newcastle win a throw just in front of us and have it over on the left hand side now with joe linton here is sean longstaff plays it to fabian Cher. newcastle looking to make it 14 games unbeaten in the premier league which would equal their overall club top flight unbeaten record Fabian Cher picked it up inside the Fulham half, but a point will not be on their minds at the moment. This is an opportunity for both sides oh. to try and get a win. As Joe Linton goes down, tripped just outside the area, and that will be a yellow card for Tim Ream. And I tell you what, that's one that Tim yeah. Ream will take all day, because if he doesn't make that challenge, Joe Linton's into the box, shot on goal, huge chance for Newcastle to take the lead. Well, it was a great turn from Joe Linton to start with, and I actually thought he was getting faced up by Tim Ream. You can see Tim, Tim Ream's going to make the challenge. You think he's going to get past you think Joe Linton's actually going to stay on his feet you think he would try and do everything in his powers to stay on his feet because he's only then 18 yards out and he's got no cover and defenders coming around him it's actually in a really dangerous spot now isn't it what it's 19 20 yards out Tripp is on it again and again we're talking about the space and just opening up just that little bit now this is where the free kick was in yes. the first half that Robert Jones then moved back five yards which nobody could really understand I mean clearly that's where he thought the foul was just be interesting to see if, if Trippi is told to move back again but no the spray is out the wall is inside the penalty area five yards or so and Trippi at five yards or so outside the box again Cher is there but again you would think this has to be Kieran Trippi can he find the breakthrough for Newcastle United the last effort hit the wall it is Cher in fact in the end oh it's off the post and the follow-up is cleared away on the edge of the six-yard box by Issa Diop from Almiron well Cher took all of us by surprise took St James's part by surprise the post rescues Fulham well it's strange that uh, Kieran Trippier didn't take that because he's taken them all season he scored three or four this season but Cher just stepped up as if nonchalantly nobody else was watching as if we're just waiting for Trippier to take it Trippier will take this corner He's proficient from those sort of positions, Cher, but Trippi is so good at them as he swings the corner and the header is flicked wide by Wilson inside the six-yard box and it's behind for a Fulham goal kick and it's still nil-nil, Newcastle rattling the woodwork. Well, another great ball in by Trippier again from this right-hand side, outswinger this time and they've got the block on and Callum Wilson's got a good head on it this time and it's just spinning away from the far post. I don't think Fulham have got anybody on that back post so if it's going to the far corner, they're not going to get anything on it. But Newcastle now starting to knock on the door. The game's really starting to open up. It's come to life. It's as if they were waiting for the first half to happen, as if everybody still have a, a bit of a hangover from the Cup game in midweek. And of course, you've got to remember, we talked about Fulham just playing on Thursday night as well. The game's just become alive. Here is Mitrovic in field to Pereira. Good fit in by Willock. And Wilson is away over the halfway line for Newcastle. Pereira chasing him. Brings Wilson down. That's a clear yellow card for Pereira. And Robert Jones, I think, got that card out in record time. Well, it was definitely yellow card, that's for sure. I mean, Wilson was actually driving away from the two centre-backs are, are dropping off really, really quickly because they've got nowhere to go. They can't commit to him because if they go past one, he's then through in the 18-yard box. It's just knocking. They're just putting pressure on them now. It's just constant pressure in terms of the pressing. Fulham now can't really seem to get out of their own half. Goal at Stamford Bridge over on 5 Live. Chelsea have taken the lead at Crystal Palace. So perhaps some respite for their beleaguered manager, Graham Potter. You can listen to that over on Five Live, or we're very glad to have your company here on Five Sports Extra. Free kick to Newcastle. Still goalless here as Trippier dinks it in quickly, looking for the run of Wilson. Leno came a long way, got a flying punch. Clear contact on the ball. Went over Wilson as well. He was just getting to his feet, but good goalkeeping by Leno. And Trippier has it back on the halfway line. Again, they just tried something a little different there, didn't they, yeah. from the free kick? 
Well, instead of loading down the back post to try to isolate somebody in the middle of the ball, but the keeper was alive for a great punch when he came out. Really brave as well. Here goes Sim Maximan for Newcastle down the left hand side up against Tete. He stands up well. So Dan Byrne will send it back to Joe Linton, who plays the ball right footed. Brilliant ball to Almiron on the right hand side of the area. Back to Trippier. Curling ball in. Headed away by Tim Ree. Mitrovic comes. Just about gets there and will try and release De over reed down this left-hand side and De over reed will get there. And he has it down the left. Two Newcastle players in attendance tried to play it infield to Pereira. Pereira still going. Oh, is he brought down there? What a huge appeal. Fulham still play on. Andreas Pereira pulls it back. De over reed can't control. Now Williams appealing. Challenged by Palinia. Willett goes down, Fulham come forward again, play continues, De over reed down again, and again Fulham are furious, they're incandescent that they don't have a penalty. Newcastle finally pick up the ball inside their own penalty area, Botman sends it out to the left hand side, I tell you what, VAR will be having a look at those, and particularly the first one when Pereira went down. Newcastle in possession with St Maximan over on the left hand side. We're still playing on, so VAR will be checking. Cher has it. Nil nil. And suddenly that spark that Steve Stone was asking for has suddenly sprung up at St James's Park as Almiron has it. Central position. Midway through the Fulham half. Gets it back from Joe Linton. Almiron still going. Almiron into the penalty area. Almiron left hand side. Sliding block by Issa Diop. It's a corner to Newcastle. Now, what will VAR decide about the penalties? at the other end and is Rob Jones saying don't restart this he's been surrounded by Fulham players Mitrovic is one of them Williams there as well what do we reckon Steve Stone well it's game on that's for sure um, I think Pereira might have gone down just too easy and that's probably why the referee hasn't given but if they are looking at it and they see there's a pull in his shirt it doesn't matter how easy he goes down it's the pull on the shirt that's the foul and that's what the Fulham bench and team and supporters are on about they're saying listen if he pulls his shirt, he doesn't have to go down, he does, it makes no difference. But then there's a tackle afterwards. Well, and, that one on Reed, and that's the one, that's the one yeah. where, which I think that's reckless. Yeah. Uh, and, and again, whether he goes down too easy or not, that's not the point. It's the fact there's a foul on him. So we're now watching the VAR afterwards. Well, there's a lot for VAR there's, to yeah, look at here. It's brilliant play. Initially, it looks as though they are seriously looking at the decoy over Reed one, which is the second one. It's right on the edge of the area. If it's on the line, it's a penalty. Oh, and God, the referee yeah. is He's, going yeah. to the screen. So the replay that we've shown that VA that we've been shown that VAR are seriously looking at, the second one for Fulham, decoy over Reed going down. Referee Robert Jones has come to the screen and Steve. We know normally what happens when a referee goes to the oh, screen. It's a penalty. It's a penalty. But we looked at the first one. I've got to be honest. I thought the first one there was a chance. There was a penalty. I thought Pereira probably went down a little bit too easy under the the challenge. But still, I thought the shirt was pulled and that could have been given. But then it's really, really frantic after that. And there's a lot of bodies and the benches go mad and everything's happening. It's a penalty. It has to it's be. been given. It has to be. Trippier on decord over Reed. And after that lengthy spell of play, I mean, can you imagine if Almiron oh scored? God. I remember being oh at God. Burnley against Bournemouth and that happened. It was <laughs> yeah. a goal one end, it got ruled back. out, penalty at, right. penalty at the other end. So after all that, it's a penalty for Fulham. And this will be very interesting because Alexander Mitrovic, the former Newcastle man, has had indifferent form from the spot this season. He scored three out of five and it's not Mitrovic who's gone straight to the spot. It's Harrison Reed. Now it's Newcastle's turn to complain. Kieran Trippier is saying, well, I don't know what he's saying, but presumably I did nothing wrong. But we've seen the replay. It's a yeah, brilliant it's little step over from Decord over Reed. Trippier's already committed. He catches him. Yes, Decord over Reed feels the contact and goes down. But, but it's a foul. It's a penalty. And that's what Fulham are about to take. Well, it's definitely a penalty because we, we've seen them in the VR. And that's what VR is there for. It's there to correct these decisions, right or wrongly. But we talked in the first half about. Uh, you know, Fulham not being strong enough in the tackle, not being good enough in the second balls. And what I've just seen there from Harrison Reed and Deco Diva Reed where was where they actually put their foot in and won the first and second challenges. And that's what got them up to the edge of the box to actually then take the trip here on the edge of the box and get the penalty. There's all sorts of shenanigans going on now for the penalty. <laughs> There's two balls on the pitch. Yeah, two balls on the pitch. Nick Pope's got one of them. Deco Diva Reed's got the other. He's now picked up that one from Nick Pope. It looks now as if it may be Andreas Pereira, although yeah. nobody's got the ball other than Decord over Reed in his hands. But it's, it's Pereira now stepping on the spot. 
And now the ball is given to Mitrovic. Yeah. It's like past the parcel for Fulham. Do you know what? I wonder if that's partly to put off Newcastle so they don't know who's going to take yeah. it. So Mitrovic has had a very long, slow walk as Nick Pope is booked for his part in those shenanigans trying to delay this spot kick. So Mitrovic very calmly walked across to the penalty spot as Newcastle makes a substitution. No, they haven't. Willick's still on the pitch. Anyway, we'll sort that out in a minute. Substitution half announced. Penalty to Fulham. Mitrovic against his former club. Pope goes the wrong way. And Mitrovic runs off to celebrate. Kicked it twice. Pope is off his own line. And he's come to talk about it with the referee now. What's going on here? Mitrovic ran away as if to celebrate. Pope comes off his line. I think he kicked it twice, Mitrovic. Let's have a look. Well, he slips as he kicks it. That's right. Yeah. Good spot, Steve Stone. He slips as he takes it. And Mitrovic has kicked the ball onto his standing foot. And the penalty will not stand. What drama at St. James's Park. So unfortunate for Alexander Mitrovic. It is standing foot. He slips as he takes it and he kicks it with his right foot onto his left foot. It goes into the net. Pope immediately runs to the referee and protests. And the referee spots it. It's a free kick to Newcastle. We're still nil-nil. And Alexander Mitrovic is in different form from the penalty spot continues. And Steve Stone, we've got our spark. Oh, it's a fabulous game. Ten minutes ago, Newcastle were right on top. Driving forward and Fulham then go on the counter-attack. Win a couple of first and tackles. Penalty comes to them. And Mirovic, you can see as he's kicked it, there's something not right about it because he's tried to kick it in the other corner. Kicked it off his other foot. All the Newcastle players, right from the start, are all around the referee, trying to say, that's not right, he's kicked it twice. They know the rules. It's just something weird about how the ball was taken from the penalty. He was trying to go back across his body, kicked it off his other foot, and it's went in the middle of the goal. And it was so obvious something was wrong. Oh, it's all happening at St James's Park. Now we get the substitution that they tried to make while the penalty was being taken. Alexander Isak is on. Joe Willock is off, so the club record signing on for Newcastle after that long injury layoff made his comeback a couple of games ago against Sheffield Wednesday and in and amongst all that we had a Fulham player falling over as all the Newcastle players ran to the referee but it's missed well it's scored but it's ruled out because Mitrovic kicked it onto his standing foot let off for Newcastle and we play on nil nil at St James's Park somehow Newcastle having hit the post in this second half as Almiron plays it back to Sean Longstaff out to the right hand side now and here is Kieran Trippier the man who gave away the penalty the share swings the ball into the area oh and it's just oh. missed by Callum Wilson on the edge of the six yard box and goes behind for a Fulham goal kick well th this is where Fulham in particular just have to get their heads clear because so much has happened in the last couple yeah. of minutes but they have to stop thinking about that penalty ruled out, disallowed for Alexander Mitrovic and start thinking about how to try and exert their influence on the game once again. Well, the defenders won't have a problem with that. They're the ones that normally have good concentration. And as the ball's coming from the right from Trippier again, that back line of Fulham looks really strong. And I've got to say, for one minute there, I thought Diop had actually just been a little bit too aggressive with Callum Wilson. I thought he was going to go down. I thought the referee was going to have to make another decision. But fair play to Callum Wilson. He stayed on his feet, but the game has definitely come to life. There's been a spark. Newcastle are trying to push really, really hard. They brought another centre forward on the pitch and they're really going to go for it. But Fulham, have, they've looked defensively really, really strong. The goalkeeper, I can't remember him having to make too many saves. I can't remember, you know, so that's fair play to that back line. That's why a team, you know, have won four out of the last four in the Premier League because they've got a good, strong defensive unit. And that's why you can see it's nil-nil, because -nil, both teams are strong defensively at the minute. And you have to say the same for Nick Pope yes, no, at no, the Pope other end be. as well. Yeah. You know, very rarely called into meaningful action as Bert Lehner has his free kick for Fulham. Well, it might be nil-nil. We've had a penalty disallowed when Alexander Mitrovic did find the back of the net, but he kicked the ball twice, kicked the ball onto his standing foot, so it was rightly disallowed by the officials. And Newcastle pick up possession over on the far side, midway through their own half with Dan Byrne, looking for the run of St Maximan, cleared away by Diop, he's had a very good game, high into the stands. But nil-nil, we've still got 
17 minutes plus out of time to play. And if you're listening to us hoping for a goal, if you're a neutral or if you're, of course, a Newcastle or a Fulham fan hoping for a particular goal, Fulham have scored in 17 of their 19 Premier League games this season, which is a league high. However, Newcastle, best defence in the top flight and 10 Premier League clean sheets, which is a league high as well. So we know that in particular, Newcastle have excelled defensively, but as Steve Stone says, Fulham have been good as well, but Williams giving it away straight to Almiron outside the penalty area. He can't find Wilson. It's well read by Ream, but what a chance that was for Almiron to feed the Newcastle number nine as he slides in on the halfway line and then blocks the effort from Decord over Reed as well. Fulham have a throw on the halfway line. Zava will take it, but... <laughs> Well, we've had the liveliness in the second half, haven't we, Steve? Well, we just looked at Almiron as well there. Williams dribbling across the pitch and Almiron's intercepted and he's through on goal just to slide Callum Wilson down the side. Tim Ream stepped in with a beautiful interception. He fell loads of experience. And then you've just seen Almiron get back in. And that's why Newcastle have been successful this season because when they do lose the ball, there's no disappointment in the team. It's just, let's get after it and win it back as a team. But Fulham have done exactly the same on the other side and that's why both teams are cancelling each other out. I do think the longer the game goes on, Newcastle have just got to watch out that Fulham can score late goals. They've got called, you, you exert too much pressure in going forward, which of course they've got to do, but you've got to mind the back door. Newcastle have got to be careful. Oh, brilliant play by Decord over Reed. It was brought down by Trippier. He's really winning that battle at the moment. Having won the penalty, which Mitrovic scored and then saw disallowed for kicking the ball twice, kicked it onto his standing foot and he's won a free kick here. Beautiful skill to get him past Trippier and you know that it just I'm not you know I'm not gonna say it I'm not gonna say it some might say watching this game it feels like there's a goal in it for either side but I'm not gonna say that because then we know it'll be nil-nil. Tossin is preparing to come on the centre half for Fulham and Andreas Pereira stands over this free kick. Whips it in, right-footed high into the area. Joe Linton wins the header. It's up, but not quite away. Newcastle do get second contact. Harrison Reed sends it back into the box. Oh. Palini was in there, brings it down, tries to get the shot away. Mitrovic looping effort, and it loops wide and behind for a Newcastle goal kick. Oh, he's desperate to make amends for that penalty. But he saw disallowed Mitrovic against his former club. As Dan Byrne has it outside his own penalty area, taking on Williams. It's very well there, Dan Byrne, but then gives the ball away. And Fulham have it with Pereira, 25 yards out, advancing towards the penalty area. Still going Pereira, ushered out by Joe Linton. Kazava will send it back in. Lovely control by Decord over Reed, edge of the box, trying to find room for the shot. Goes down, cleared away by Newcastle. Isak, good touch. Nicely worked by St. Maximan to Joe Linton. And now Isak over the halfway line, evades the challenge of Diop. Not a Palinia, though, who came in with Tete, but Newcastle still have it. And St. Maximan down the left-hand side into the area. It's ahead of Wilson. Leno's chasing. Wilson will get there. Does he keep it in? Yes, he does on the byline. Leno scrambling back. Good save as Wilson whips the ball across. Comes out to Almiron who plays it to St. Maximan, edge of the area, drives the shot low, just past the post, and is behind for a Fulham goal kick, as Eddie Howe has his hands on his head. Well, I've got no idea where to start with that play, I've got to be honest with you, but the referee's done amazingly well to start with. Isaac's just about to be pulled back by three players. Newcastle fans are crying out for a free kick, but he just gives himself a little bit of time to make the decision. Ball breaks and the play on comes out to St Maximum and beautifully comes inside it. As we talked about before, why would you pass when you're 18 yards out? This time he doesn't. He tries to smash one in the bottom corner. The keeper doesn't move. It goes inches wide. So double change for Fulham. Dan James is on for William. And Tossin is on for Andreas Pereira. So interesting to see how Fulham reshuffle this. What does this tell us, if anything, about how Marco Silva is approaching the final 30 minutes plus added time? Because Williams has been quieter in the last 15 minutes. Pereira has still been right in the heart of it. Well, what's happened is um, they've gone to a, a three at the back or a five at the back. It looks like, yeah, it looks like they're going to go to a, a three stroke five. Um, but still putting on Dan James at the top end of the pitch, so they've still got a threat at the top end of the pitch with Pearson behind and trying to get uh, Fulham's two wide men, which have been... Uh, William, I think, like you say, William just struggled in the second half, decent and lively in the first half, but quite didn't, couldn't quite carry the pace of the game, the energy. So he's gone three at the back, um, but he's also left the two wide men on to try and create some problems so he can still try and win the game. So Newcastle in possession just outside their own penalty area. It's been a great second half here 
on five sports extra nil nil at st james's park alexander mitrovic with a penalty disallowed after he kicked it onto his standing foot so two touches of the ball correctly ruled out by the official slipped as he took it mitrovic so unfortunate against his former club that let off for newcastle as Tazava heads that all the way back to Burnt Leno, who's closed down by Callum Wilson. And Burnt Leno just picks up the ball and jogs through his own penalty area. A reminder, all the reaction to this match you can listen to on the Football Daily on BBC Sounds and check out the Sports Test podcast if you'd like while you're there. A recent one on Saudi Arabia's growing influence in sport. Ronaldo's oh. move as Mitrovic goes down outside oh, the penalty wow. area and is penalised. The free kick goes against the former Newcastle man. Newcastle want to take it quickly, but the referee says that Mitrovic is still down, so just wants to make sure that he is okay. Not Well, physically he might be okay. I'm not sure how okay he'll be emotionally, having seen that penalty ruled out here at his former club. Strange decision again from the referee. Um, been questionable in some of his decisions. Obviously, VAR's helped him out. And there I thought actually Mitrovic was going through on goal and it looked like the foul should have been towards him but obviously the referee's seen something different. He must have been pulling Trippier's shirt or his shorts. Um, but it's been a lively occasion. It's, it's, it's been a difficult afternoon for the referee because there's been so much going on. There's been so much incident. So, 11 minutes plus added time to play. Trippier in possession for Newcastle. Here is Fabian Scher and now Sven Botman just outside the Newcastle penalty area. Bringing it forward towards the halfway line, lays it off to Joe Linton. And you do wonder at what point either side might just start to think in the back of their minds, you know what, a point against a side that are just two places different to us. As Joe Linton catches the ball there. And you know what, he's not given Robert Jones, the referee, a choice there really, because he didn't initially, well he has given him a choice, but Robert Jones has decided to go the way of Newcastle because the free kick initially wasn't given. The ball is cleared away. Joe Linton catches the ball. And so the he referee has either has to say, right, free kick to Fulham because you've caught the ball. Or actually, I, I do decide that, that that is a free kick to Newcastle. Which Trippier is over. Wide right position, just about level with the edge, the right-hand side of the penalty area. And Trippier standing over it for Newcastle United. Nil-nil. Are we to have a breakthrough in the final 10 minutes? So Trippier over this one. It's a one-player Fulham wall. It's Dan James, so <laughs> not much height there. But it will, you would think, unless Trippier tries something different, go to the left. And it does. It's a good delivery. It's well headed away by Issa Diop, brought down by Joe Linton. Turning, looking for the shot. Deflection. And Leno just gets there ahead of the onrushing Callum Wilson and Fabian Scher. Now he stayed down there, Leno. I think there was a collision there with Wilson. And the referee again has just stopped play. Since those substitutions, I know, I know we said that he's still trying to win the game, Marco Silva, but it just feels that the mentality from Fulham has shifted a little bit more defensively. Absolutely, and uh, you can't blame them for that. You know, Newcastle have created numerous opportunities without actually hitting the target. It's been um, a story of Newcastle's last few games. You know, Leeds was nil, couldn't score there. Um, got the one against Sheffield Wednesday in the Cup, got nothing at um, Arsenal, but that's a different story altogether. And it's, um, you know... Fulham are looking at this thinking, this is a really good point to come to St James's Park. Doesn't matter if Fulham have won the last four or five or whatever. This is a really, really good point for them away from home. It shows the progression they're making. Newcastle will still go for it. They're, they're the team that are now thinking, where is St James's Park? Where are at home? We need to really try and win this game. You know, they've, they've dropped down to fourth, which is still an amazing position for them. Um, but there's teams closing in on them for that fourth, fourth and fifth position now. So Newcastle really need to try and win this football match. And that's why they're going hell for leather to try and do that. Out on the left-hand side, Newcastle do win the throw. Yes, Fulham winless on their last six Premier League visits here, but they have drawn their last two. They're heading for a point at the moment as Harrison oh. Reed plays it forward, looking for the run of Dan James, looking to use his pace. He goes down on the edge of the box. Will be picked up by Sven Botman, who clears away for Newcastle. Another half penalty appeal, although James didn't really turn to the referee, Robert Jones, and ask very much. The away contingent high up in the stands to our left certainly did. As the ball is played out to the left-hand side and Dan Byrne. Fulham, who have already seen Mitrovic score a penalty, but that penalty be disallowed for Mitrovic kicking it onto his own foot as he took it. As Isak plays it forward to Callum Wilson, edge of the penalty area, sliding challenge by Tete. It's out for a Newcastle corner. Well, Isak's made a bit of a difference coming in them little holes. Um, Newcastle normally play a 4-3-3, but Isak's in them holes. It's a different opposition playing that 10, causing some problems on the counter-attack. 
Got good pace, good drive. So corner to be taken from the right-hand side. Kieran Trippier stands over it for Newcastle. St Maximan's there as the short option. Again, it's a packed six-yard box and Trippier loops it high looking for Joe Linton who does win the header and Leno comes and claims that very well inside the six-yard area. <laughs> well, it's one of these where Leno is still down. Kazava, who's now playing at left wing back, has raced up to the halfway line and, you know, with his body language saying, you know, come on, play it quickly, yeah. we can be away on the counter. Burnt Leno, absolutely one thought in his mind, just waste a bit of time and try and help Fulham see out this clean sheet as Kieran Trippier picks it up, plays it back under a bit of pressure from Decord over Reed and Cher will go all the way back to Nick Pope. He's closed down by Mitrovic and will play it out to Sven Botman. Fulham trying to close Newcastle down, but not with the urgency. They're focused on preserving their defence at the moment. And if they can fashion another chance, it's Marco Silva's right out of his technical area. I wonder if he just wants a little bit more from them in an attacking sense as Almiron picks it up just outside the centre circle. Plays it out to the left-hand side and St Maximan. Back to Almiron and now Longstaff on the halfway line. Plays it forward, looking for the turn of... Isak, who is bundled over, and that will be a free kick to Newcastle midway through the Fulham half. Nil-nil, we're approaching the final five minutes plus out of time. Steve Stone, which way is it going? Well, it's difficult to call. This. I mean, as, as you're looking at the minute, Fulham really can't get any good possession, can't get any drive to get up the pitch, keep turning the ball over too easily. For the minute, we've now got Isak, that's coming at number 10 all again there. He's just received the ball from Longstaff on the half turn. Diop's had to come out of his centre-half position and take him down. So he's causing some problems, so if he can drag one of them centre-halves out and get to slide down inside the other one, there could be opportunities for Callum Wilson because that, that back four, back five has been rock-solid so far for Fulham. So Almiron's run himself into the ground again. He's been replaced by Jacob Murphy as Newcastle prepare to take their latest set-piece. Midway through the Fulham half, Kieran Trippier over it once again. The ball is lifted in. It's not the best delivery. Cleared away. Fulham have a player down inside their own penalty area. Newcastle are playing on with Fabian Scher. The block was almost made by Mitrovic and will be cleared away by Harrison Reed. And now the referee stops play because that player, Lavin Kazava, has stayed down for Fulham. And he is holding the back of his head. I, I think that's good refereeing. I know yeah. there's frustration around St James's part, but he let it play on. Kazava's holding the back of his head. In the end, the momentum had gone for Newcastle in that attack. And so they can stop play and make sure Kazava's OK. Well, in the modern day game, of course, you've got to make sure he's OK, whether he's actually took a, a real physical bump or not. You can't take chances in these situations um, unless uh, Fulham are trying to run down the clock, which you, <laughs> which he might be doing. But like you see, he can't take chances. Newcastle have pushed really hard. Um, it's been the story of the game, probably. Fulham had the first 20, 25 minutes where they looked really strong and energetic. Newcastle really couldn't get going after their cup win in midweek, but second half they've really come out. St Maximum has made a bit of a difference on the on that left-hand side. Isak's made a difference in the 10. He's made some good substitutions, Eddie, to, to try to affect the game. But on the other side of it, Marco Silva's made some good defensive substitutions to try and block stuff up as well, you know, by putting an extra centre-half in there. So when Diop does come out to challenge Isak, He's got the other two centre-halves sitting alongside him, so as Callum Wilson is difficult to run down the side. I've got to say I've been really, really impressed by Fulham. An attacking sense is difficult to come to St James's Park and have lots of the ball and affect the game on that side of it. But defensively, they've been sound and they've been solid. But they've still got four minutes plus stoppage time to go. And we know both teams can score their goals. And they were a disallowed penalty away, Fulham, from taking the leads. And to win at St James's Park in the Premier League is something that doesn't really happen for opponents since Eddie Howe was appointed by the new owners back in November 2021. Manchester City and Liverpool, the only sides to win here in the top flight since then. But Mitrovic kicked the ball onto his standing foot. That's why it was disallowed. And the other key moment in the second half, Cher rattling the post with a free kick that everybody expected Kieran Trippier to take. But Cher certainly showed his set-piece prowess. The width of the woodwork away from giving Newcastle that lead. Now St Maximan has gone down and stayed down. Newcastle still in possession. They're playing on. St Maximan eventually getting back up to his knees as Joe Linton picks it up midway through the Fulham half. Isak now sends it out to the left-hand side and Dan Burn Early ball in, blocked away by Kenny Tete. It will be a Newcastle threat. It's one of these are St Maximan's looking around, I think, saying, you know, come on, put it out, I'm down. But Newcastle no. don't want to. It's nil-nil. No, no. They've got two and a half minutes for Saturday time to play and St Maximan, he's all right. He's back up to his feet 
And we play on. Here is Isak, who's picked up some good pockets of space since coming on yes. the club record signing. Challenged on the edge of the box, fairly so, says referee Robert Jones. And Fulham will play it to Tim Ream, who plays it down this left-hand side. Oh, well okay. intercepted by Jacob Murphy, who plays it forward to Trippier. Lovely touch to get it out from under his feet, as does Wilson. Edge of the D, pulls it back to Isak. So Max Mann wants it on the left. Isak goes right instead to Murphy. And now Trippier, Newcastle moving the ball fast, moving it freely. Can they get it into the penalty area? They will now with Longstaff, who lifts it in, looking for the header for Wilson. And it's bundled in by Alexander Isak on the goal line. And Newcastle, late on at St James's Park, have the breakthrough against Fulham. 1-0 they lead in the Premier League. Well, we talked about the late goal. Newcastle just kept going and going and going. The substitutes have been positive and some maximum and Isaac coming on the pitch to try and win the football match. You just sense there that Fulham had just sat back and didn't get anywhere near the cross for the first time in a long time in the second half. The ball into the box is quality. There's been too many that have hit the front man from Trippier. This time it's Longstaff who knocks it to the back post for Wilson to head back across. And because Newcastle have got two centre forwards on the pitch, we talked about in the first half, just get the bodies in the six-yard box. And Isaac just pops it in from two yards out. You've got to get bodies in your six-yard box and you have to get quality in the box and that's exactly what happened. They've just kept going, knocking on the door and I just thought they'd never get that goal. Well, it's so tenacious from Callum Wilson. The initial header is blocked, but he has the presence of mind to keep it in with his left foot. He scoops it up, and Alexander Isak behind the ball, so clearly onside, heads it into an empty net. It's his third goal in six appearances for the club record signing. And look, we know how well Newcastle are doing already this season. They've missed him for most of the campaign because he's been out with a thigh injury. I mean, he's looked so good yeah, since right. coming on. It's another string to the bow of Eddie Howe. Yeah, he's looked bright since he's come on, hasn't he? He's filled those little pockets. He's, he's played that number 10 role really well. You're actually thinking, where is he going to play? Do they play two up front? But when he's coming, he can actually play in the 10 role and he'll be really bright. So Maximus came on and he's been bright when he's come on that side. Sometimes he's disciplined in terms of his positioning. And Fulham, you feel so sorry because they've worked incredibly, incredibly hard. They're disciplined more than they've showed in terms of a team shape and their organisation. And the penalty that's then being disallowed when it's come on Mitrovic has, has kicked it against his standing foot. You always knew from the start of this game how a midfield battle was. It was going to be an incredibly tight game. Both defences have been on top. Both have got good shape. Both have got good discipline. The Newcastle have been the ones that have been pushing. The Fulham will be, they'll be devastated by what's happened because they've been right in this game. And they've worked incredibly hard. And Newcastle are coming forward again. Fulham want to make a triple substitution. We're into five minutes of added time at the end of the second half. Isak's late goal sees Newcastle lead by a goal to nil. And he's gone down now, Isak. They've won a free kick. Newcastle over on that far side. And here comes the triple change for Fulham, who have moments, moments left to get themselves back into this match. So Issa Diop is coming off for Carlos Vinicius, the striker who scored his first goal for the club last match against Chelsea. Harry Wilson is on as well. And Tom Kearney, they replace Harrison Reed and Bobby D. Cordova Reed. Well, he's throwing everybody on now, Marco Silva. But as you say, I mean, credit to Newcastle for the tenacity, but it is so cruel on Fulham, who have played so well. Well, they've came with a game plan uh, and, and it's worked for the most. They've, you know, they've tried to press Newcastle when they can, they've tried to counter-attack when they can, they've tried to play the football, they've tried to mix it. But as the game's got stretched, it's got a little bit, you know, as the time's gone on, Fulham have just got that little bit stretched there. And when they brought the three centre-halves on, you're thinking they're just going to try and shore up the game. But sometimes what that does is when you bring an extra defender on, it actually encourages more space for the opposition to come on top of them. And that's what's happened. It's been relentless that Newcastle have been coming on top. But I've got to say, Fulham for the rest of the season, how they've gone so far, they've really impressed me. And they're, they're going to continue to have a good season. Ball goes out of play for a goal kick to Fulham. We have two and a half minutes of added time to play. Newcastle not happy with that decision in the coaching area, but referee Robert Jones is saying, that is my call. And Bernd Leno places the ball on the edge of his six yard box. Newcastle one, Fulham nil. 
And the referee is, is just telling Bernardo to stop here. Jacob Murphy's gone down. That's what Newcastle were pointing the referee's attention to. So Fulham will say, well, you need to make sure that this time yeah. is added on. And Chris Wood preparing to come on for Newcastle. Well, we're just looking at Jacob Murphy's come on as a substitute. And he's, uh, uh, again, he's worked in trouble behind, but it looks like he's either got a tight hamstring or he's pulled it. Um, it's normally his role at the minute, Jacob Murphy's normally the one that does come on for Almiron and, and tries to do exactly the same as what Almiron's done and working really hard down that right-hand side. He's now up and now moving. So whether it's a bit of tactical play as well, you're not quite sure, but he's stretching that right hamstring with a little bit of intent as if to say, yeah, I might need to come off here. Because Chris Wood definitely looks like he's coming on. They're looking at some maximum as well on the far side to see whether they're trying to, you know, now he's played his part in winning the game and stretching Fulham down that, that left-hand side. Might want to take him off. The time is ticking away. There are conversations going on between the Fulham coaching staff and the Newcastle coaching staff. Bern Leno is waiting to take this goal kick. And, and for Newcastle, this is one where next time the ball goes out of play, Jacob Murphy will go down again yeah. and he'll come off. Because they just want to see this out now, leading by a goal to nil. We've got a minute of added time left to play of the minimum five, but you'd think there'd be more after that stoppage for the injury to Murphy. As the ball ricochets out of play. It's a throw to Newcastle over on the far side, and Dan Byrne will take his time over this. And now Newcastle are preparing to make this change. And in fact, it's not Murphy, it's Callum Wilson. He played such a huge part in that goal for Alexander Isak coming up. Well, I think he's been bright and everything that he's done, been pivotal. Um, the quality that's coming to the box for Newcastle, the first time in a long time, hasn't been the quality that it, that it should be. Um, but he was in the right place at the right time. I actually thought the headaway he's tried to head it back across. The, I thought he should have done better with it. I thought he should score. He was actually going to score. But he's had the presence of mind as the ball's dropped and it's blocked off the defender to pass it across the back by Isaac for the goal. And he's played his part again. He's such a huge plays a huge pivotal part in this Newcastle team he's the leading centre forward, gets down the side stretches the pitch and I've got to say from a Fulham point of view you, you will be devastated by what's happening here they've, they've played ever so well they've stuck to the task for a man, they've worked incredibly hard Newcastle with the throw the five minutes minimum are up but we will play a bit more you would think, how much more will it be Bert Leno has the ball inside his own penalty area. It's out for a Fulham goal kick. It has to go forward. And they know that, Fulham, the three players are on. They've just got to get as many of those light green shirts as they can up front. The ball is up, looking towards Mitrovic. Joe Linton wins the header. Both players go down. We play on. Kearney out to the left-hand side. And Kazava takes a little deflection and will be cleared away by Kieran Trippier. Palina wins the header. And the ball goes out of play for a Newcastle throw and Newcastle United are nearly there. We've played the five minutes minimum at a time. But as we say, there will be a little bit more added on for that stoppage as Jacob Murphy just received a bit of treatment. But Steve Stone, Newcastle with the throw midway through their own half. This is exactly where they want it. But it just shows you as well how hard it is to win a game in the Premier League. Um, Fulham have played Thursday night against you know, Chelsea side and they've won, they've been competitive in that game. And Newcastle have come here today and we, we spoke before the game about how difficult this game would be for both sides to try and win. And Newcastle at the minute are just coming out on top, but, you know, Fulham, I guess we've spoken about it so far, they'd be devastated by what's happening in this football match. But, we can rest assured, they are having a good season, we'll continue to have a good season. Ball cleared away by Kenny Tete off Alexander Isak, Fulham win the throw, still we play on. They have to get it forwards. Initially, they go backwards. Fulham to toss in, and now Ream as the whistles go around St James's Park. But the only one that matters is the one from referee Robert Jones as Mitrovic flicks it on. But there is the full time whistle, and Newcastle with a late, late goal from club record signing Alexander Isak have broken Fulham hearts. There were just two places between them coming into this match. But Newcastle find a way at the end after Mitrovic sees his penalty ruled out against his former side. It's 14 games unbeaten in the Premier League for Eddie Howe and Newcastle. It's their best equaling run in the top flight.
and Steve Stone, this feels like a big, a big three points for the Magpies. Well, it's a massive win after you look at the game in midweek, where you have to follow up a big win with another big win. That's what top teams do, whether in the Champions League, whether in the, the, the league or whether in the cup competitions. Teams like Man City, Manchester United, they continue to win. Sometimes it's not always pretty, but they win football matches, they find a way. And normally their substitutes are the key pivotal moments in a game. And Newcastle's were that today. But Newcastle had to make those changes, they made the positive goals with St. Maximum, and these acts come on to get the winner. And that has been the difference today. Newcastle have been able to bring substitutes on that have affected the game and made the difference. Now Newcastle need to sign more players like that to do that. Go back to Fulham, I think they've put everything in the game. I think they've got, you know, they're going to have a good season. They've had a good season. They've went under the radar, but they're really, really well organised. I've said already, they'll be devastated by what's happened today. But they'll also take consolation for the fact that they've come to Newcastle United and put on a real show today. They've made a real game of this. They're a top side at the minute. They're going in the right direction. But Newcastle found a way to win. And that's really, really important at this stage of the season. And we said at the start of commentary, didn't we, that... Alexander Mitrovic would play a part whatever happened yeah. this afternoon in the story and it's so unfortunate for him he takes the penalty with his right foot he slips as he takes it and it hits his left standing foot it's disallowed and Newcastle find the goal at the other end well I mean Mitrovic himself is always a controversial figure, isn't it? There's always something going to happen, good or bad in the game. You know, he's been sent off this season, he got sent off for Newcastle. He was a bit of a cult uh, figure when he was here at Newcastle as well. The fans loved him, they didn't really want him to go. I think it was the time when Newcastle got relegated, they left and went on to pastures new. When there was so much going on around the penalty at the time, wasn't it? We weren't even sure who was going to take it. And we waited an eternity. Newcastle are actually attacking down the other end and had an opportunity. It comes back. We have to go to ball before the penalty's been taken. Nick Pope gets booked in the build-up, trying to put him off. As he goes up to take it, it's a la John Terry in the Champions League final, where, if you can imagine that, where he just slips and puts it wide. Well, this time he slips and kicks it off his own foot, goes into the centre of the goal, and immediately you can tell by the reactions of the Newcastle players that something's not right he's trying to fit it across himself into the far corner he's kicked it off his other foot it's gone down the middle of the goal and you know he's kicked it off his other foot and he's had two touches of the ball before it's went in the back of the net and that for me seemed to be the bit of the turning point in the game as well then Newcastle got on top and they really rallied you can you can tell that spurred the supporters on as well well, real teams of celebration here at St James's Park. I hope you can hear us over the PA. They do, they do like to crank it up as the uh, as the Newcastle players are doing their lap of appreciation and the black and white flags wave around us. So let's have a look at the Premier League table. Then Newcastle back up to third, ahead of Manchester United on goal difference. Fulham stay in six now, seven points behind Newcastle and seven points of the top four. And Stamford Bridge it has finished one nil. Chelsea, a huge win for beleaguered Chelsea manager Graham Potter. Kai Havertz getting the winner there. And over on Five Live, our build up is already underway for the North London Derby. 4.30 kickoff, Tottenham against Arsenal. So thank you very much for your company here on Five Live Sports Extra this afternoon. From Steve and myself, we very much enjoyed having you wherever you've been listening to us. It finishes on a dramatic afternoon at St James's Park, courtesy of Alexander Isaac's late goal, Newcastle United 1, Fulham Nips.